Qianjun Chong Boutique ING, Daily Explosive Updates After several years of confusion, Bai Feng accidentally bumped into his head and suddenly remembered the memories of his past life, making his thinking clear. At this moment, a Chanadu walked over and said, Baby, Mom is back. Wait. Is my mother a Shanada? Also, why do I understand what a Chanadu is talking about? Is my brain really okay? This book is also known as, The Road of My Tree Fruit Tycoon, The Addiction of Horse Killing Chicken, and, The Devil's Hand That No One Can Escape, Pokemon, 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 and Pokemon, Note. The main background of this book is Pokemon animation, with a few game characters and settings interspersed as supplements. Keywords of the Novel Pokemon World Without Pop-Up Starting From Being Picked Up by Shanadu, Full text download of Pokemon World starting from being picked up by Shanadu, and latest chapter reading of Pokemon World starting from being picked up by Shanadu. Chapter 1 Little Boy and Chanadu. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 Little Boy and Chanadu on the unnamed coast, pure white waves beat against the golden beach, and on the beach lay a half made raft. At this moment, a half-aged boy walked out of the nearby forest, dragging a thick piece of wood in his hand. Hee hee, hee hee, hee hee. Damn it, I'm exhausted. Halfway through, the young man suddenly threw the wood onto the ground and sat down on it, panting heavily. Hey, what kind of sin did I create? I'm going to suffer this kind of crime. Goo 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 goo, scrap wood. Scrap wood. At this moment, a wave flew from somewhere and stood on the branch, mercilessly mocking him, making a strange sound in his mouth, looking extremely imposing. You curse again. You curse again. I haven't had lunch for today yet. The boy picked up a stone from the ground and threw it fiercely towards Bobo. Goo, Bobo flew lightly from the branch, and the stone thrown by the boy did not even touch a single strand of its hair. After finishing, it still circled around the boy's head, teasing him enough before proudly leaving. This island can't last a minute, it's really frustrating, he said angrily as he stood up again, dragging the wood under his buttocks and continuing towards the beach. When he dragged the wood near the half-made raft, he almost collapsed from exhaustion. Damn it I'm just a child. This young man is our protagonist. His name is Bai Fong, and he is eight years old this year, probably because he didn't remember some things when he was too young. Since he had memories, he has lived on this deserted island. As for how I got to this island, I'm sorry, I don't remember. Why did Bai Fong live a chaotic life in the first eight years of his life? Because he did not live in the human world and did not receive the guidance of human words and deeds, his knowledge, habits, intelligence, and so on were not fully cultivated, so he lived almost indistinguishable from a fool. Until recently, he was in the forest watching the long-nosed leaves fight. At that time, it was probably because the fight was too intense, and the two long-nosed lobes in the battle began to go crazy. The other onlookers, Pokemon, knew to dodge, except for Bai Fong, a little fool who remained motionless. In the end, he was hit by the shockwave generated by the battle and hit his forehead against a stone. This collision brought back his memories from his past life. Bai Fong is a traveler who lived in a world called Blue Star in his past life. One day while shopping on the street, he suddenly heard someone shouting for robbery, and then saw a man running towards him, holding a women's shoulder bag in his hand. The thieves all ran towards him, and he thought he should act bravely once, so he planned to stop the thief. However, he was not the only one who wanted to act bravely, and there was a girl next to him who also wanted to stop the thief. Two people rushed forward together and accidentally bumped into each other. Bai Fong was standing on the roadside when he was hit and hit onto the road. He was directly killed by a speeding electric vehicle coming towards him. I really died before I succeeded in my graduation. Speaking of it is all tears. Even if one dies while fighting a thief, it sounds better than being hit by an electric bike. Hold back one's grievances perhaps because he died too suffocated, 
God gave him another chance, and he was reincarnated into the world of Pokémon. Bai Fong obediently tied the newly moved wood onto the raft, striving to finish it as soon as possible, and then left this isolated island. Halfway tied up, a Shanadot suddenly appeared next to Bai Fong, holding a pile of fruits in its arms. With a gentle expression, it called out to Bai Fong, Sha Shanadot, baby, come and eat. Come on, come on. Bai Fong walked up to Shinaduo and sat on the leaves that Shinaduo had laid. He picked up a peach fruit stacked on the leaves and casually wiped it on his clothes before eating it. His simple and shabby clothes were still made by Shanadu using the silk of a round silk spider combined with leaves. Apart from being able to cover key areas, they have no other function. Fortunately, the climate on the island is hot, and even without clothes, it won't freeze. Otherwise, whether Bai Fong can grow to eight years old is a question. Seeing Bai Fong eating hard, Shinaduo asked, Shinai Shinai, baby, are we really leaving here? Shanadu felt that he had become strange since his son fainted a few days ago and woke up again. He not only named himself, but also vowed to leave here. I used to live here quite well, why did I have to leave? Shanadu, who is very satisfied with his current life, expressed a lack of understanding. Looking at the endless sea outside, Shanadu was a bit scared. Upon hearing Shanado's words, Bai Fong couldn't help but sigh. Speaking of Chanadu, there was another burst of bitter tears. God knew how devastated he was when he regained his senses and found out that his mother was a Chanadu. But don't misunderstand, he is a serious human, not a Pakemon, nor a half-human, half Pakemon. Shanadu is just his foster mother. Probably. Anyway, where did he come from? He doesn't know either, nor does Shanadu. According to Shanadu himself, he found a white maple by the seaside. As for why can Bai Fong understand the language of Pakemon? As a child raised by Pakemon and wandering among various Pakemon since childhood, what's strange about him being able to learn Pakemon language? Before his mental state recovered, although Bai Fong had been living in a daze, it was because of this that he developed a childlike heart and the ability to communicate with Pokémon. The outside world is very exciting. It's so boring to stay here for a lifetime. When you see the outside world, you will know that it's good, Bai Fong replied. Shanadu looked puzzled and said, How do you know that the outside world is very exciting? Oh, I just know. Bai Fong couldn't explain, so he had to change the topic. Have you finished eating? Let's start training now. Although Shinado has evolved to its final form, she has always lived a lazy and scattered life before, and has one personality. Well, to put it simply, it is, my silly and sweet mother. So after Bai Fong returned to normal, he began to train Shinado in a planned manner. At first, the lazy Shanadu was very unwilling to cooperate with the laborious training plans formulated by Bai Fong, but Bai Fong advised it. The outside world is very dangerous. If we don't have the ability to protect ourselves, can we wait to die in danger? Mom is not afraid of her precious son being bullied by bad people. How can that be done? Shanadu doesn't want his son, who has worked hard to pull him up, to be bullied by others. If he wants to be bullied, he can only bully himself. Hump so Shanadu had to accept the training with tears in his eyes. Although this island is a deserted one, one advantage is that it doesn't have any powerful or dangerous Pokemon, so Shanadu has been living a mediocre life. But no one knows what the situation is outside. In case of danger, they don't even have any means to deal with it. Isn't that bad? Anyway, Bai Fong couldn't have left unprepared. If an old mother wants to leave with herself, she must have some self-protection ability. If the old mother is unwilling to leave, Bai Fong will deceive another Pokémon on the island to accompany him. Fortunately, although the thief mercilessly threw him on this deserted island, he also gave some compensation. After recovering his sanity, he found himself with a golden finger. This golden finger is not something he only had after his mental recovery, 
but has existed from the beginning. It's just that he used to be foolish and didn't know how to use it. It is precisely because of this golden finger that Bai Fong has the confidence to survive in this unknown world. After a few days of exploration, Bai Fong has roughly understood the function of his golden finger. Upon hearing Bai Fang's words, Shanadu obediently lay on the leaves lying on the ground. Although training is very tiring, Shanadu enjoys the big health care before and after training. After Shanaduo finished lying down, Bai Feng pressed his hand against its back, and then Shanaduo felt a heat flow flowing through Bai Feng's palm into its body. With the appearance of this warm current, Shanadu felt all the cells in his body start to tremble, and the ultimate sense of pleasure surged throughout his body. Shanai Nai Nai Nai, Shanadu couldn't help but squint her eyes and let out waves of inexplicable moans. This is Bai Feng's golden finger, which is also the great health care that Shanadu believes. After regaining his senses, Bai Feng strangely sensed a special energy in his body. This energy starts from his heart and can be controlled by him to travel throughout his body, as well as guided out of his body. After conducting experiments on different Pokémon on the island, he found that this energy not only helps Pokémon recover from fatigue, but also purifies and compresses their internal energy. Each type of Pokémon has a unique set of energy circuits within its body, which Bai Feng discovered while examining their bodies with his golden fingers. With the use of golden fingers, Bai Feng can easily observe the structure and real dot time changes of the energy circuit inside Pokémon's body. Usually, these energy circuits will autonomously absorb a special type of energy that is free in the air, and store this energy in Pokémon's body, making it stronger and stronger. The reason why Pokémon use skills is that this special energy in their bodies resonates with another type of energy in the air, temporarily called attribute energy. For example, the water gun skill is formed by the resonance between the special energy inside Pokémon and the water system energy in the air. Why does the skill power of the water system increase in rainy weather? It is because rainy weather can gather the energy of the surrounding water system together, making this resonance more obvious and easier. The energy inside Pokémon is named the source energy by Bai Feng, because this energy is related to the strength of Pokémon. It may not be accurate to say strength, but rather level. Because Pokémon are strong or weak, the amount of original energy is not the only determining factor. The influence of the original energy on the Pokémon level can be reflected in two aspects, namely quality and quantity. Under the same conditions, the higher the level of Pokémon stored in the body, the higher the quality of Pokémon stored in the body. In addition, the strength of Pokémon's control over their internal source energy also affects their combat effectiveness, so Bai Feng said that the source energy represents only the level of Pokémon rather than their strength. The strength of the white maple gold finger lies in its ability to assist in compressing the original energy of Pokémon, allowing for the storage of more original energy in the limited energy circuit of Pokémon. In addition, it can also remove impurities from the original energy of Pokémon, making it more pure. The purer the source energy of Pokémon, the stronger its resonance with external attribute energy, and the stronger the power of Pokémon's skills. When the energy circuit inside Pokémon absorbs energy from the air, it will more or less absorb some impurities, so the original energy inside Pokémon is not 100% pure. According to Bai Feng's observation, the 100% pure source energy should be light blue, as clear as the bright sky. But the original energy containing impurities is more or less tinged with blue or purple, or red or green colors. For example, the original energy of Chanadu is mixed with various colors, and its purity can reach 60%. Even the white maple feels grateful. White maple carefully controls the golden finger to swim through the energy circuit of Chanadu, helping it compress and purify its original energy. He must be fully focused on this process, otherwise it will damage Shinado's energy circuit, and that will be absolutely unacceptable. The energy circuits within each Pokémon are different, and there are also subtle differences between the same species. The starting point of the Chanadu energy circuit is the red sensory organ behind it, 
and the end point is the red sensory organ in the chest. After controlling his golden fingers to swim around with difficulty, Bifon was sweating profusely, but Sinedo felt comfortable and almost fell asleep. The process of Bifon helping Sinedo compress and purify the original energy is also his process of exercising the golden finger. Every time he helps Sinedo complete a great health care, he feels that his control over the golden finger has become stronger. All right, get up quickly and start training. White Maple shook the Shanadot and awakened it. Shanadu reluctantly climbed up from the leaves, his eyes filled with accusations. As a mother, shouldn't you take good care of your child? You are so weak now, how will you protect me in the future? Bai Feng's face, which was dark from the sun, wrinkled into a ball. I am so pitiful. I have to worry so much at such a young age. Will I not grow tall in the future? Upon hearing these words, Shane Duo's face suddenly changed, and her maternal radiance was completely ignited in her heart. She clenched her fist and said, Shane Shane, baby, don't worry, mom will become stronger. All right, I'll trust you once and see how you perform in the future, he said proficiently as he climbed onto Shinado's back. All right, let's start. Today, we'll run ten laps around the beach. Shanai. Shanai, ten laps. Wasn't it only eight laps yesterday? By phone couldn't argue, today's you are no longer yesterday's you. Don't talk nonsense, let's go. Shinado had no choice but to obediently run around the beach. After physical exercise, there is also skill training, so Shanadu didn't have any free time all afternoon. By phone would play with his raft whenever he had the opportunity. In the blink of an eye, a week passed and Bai Feng's raft was finally ready. He chose a sunny day and planned to set sail. End of this chapter Chapter 2 Wandering at Sea You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Wandering at Sea On the day of departure, all the Pokémon on the island who knew Bai Feng came to see him off and gave him their farewell gifts, most of which were food and various fruits. There are also some things that may be used in maritime navigation, such as spider silk, rattan whips, and so on. After Bai Feng boarded the raft with Shinido, he waved goodbye to Pokemon on the shore and said, goodbye. It's hard to say whether he can see each other again in the future. In fact, Bai Feng knew it was very risky to go out on a raft like this, but he had no choice. He doesn't know exactly where this island is and how far it is from the continent where humans live. We can't hope that someone will pass by here by boat, can we? He may have to wait on the island for more than twenty years, just like Robinson. Who can bear this? The raft slowly drifted towards the sea under the control of Shinado's superpowers, and the figures of the Pokémon on the shore gradually disappeared from White Maple's sight. In order not to lose his way at sea, Bai Feng specially made a simple compass made of a magnet given to him by a small magnetic monster on the island. Drifting on the sea is very boring and lonely. After sailing for most of the time, Bai Feng said to Shinado in a bored manner. Mom, can I give you a name? Humans have names, for example, my name is Bai Feng. Although you are not human, as my mother, you must have a name. When it comes to the human world, calling him a Shinedo mother is inevitably strange. Although he doesn't mind telling others that Shanadu is his foster mother, some curious people are bound to ask questions. Rather than explaining the truth back and forth to others, it's better not to arouse their curiosity at the beginning. As long as Shinedo has a name, he can directly address Shinedo's name, and it won't be so strange. Upon hearing this, Shinedo nodded and agreed, Shinedo, that's great. What's the name for that? Bai Feng furrowed his brow and pondered, My name is Bai Feng. As my mother, why don't you call me Bai Yi? Maple Yi. I feel like our names match quite well. Is there something wrong with the surnames of this mother and her son? Shanadu is just a silly and sweet person. He always says whatever his son says, and besides, he doesn't understand what kind of name sounds good or bad, so he happily agrees. Shanai, great. 
the mother and son chatted haphazardly to pass the time. After an unknown amount of time, Bai Yi looked at Bai Fong with a bitter face and asked, Shanai Shanai, can I rest for a while? I'm so tired. Bai Fong said with a stern expression, didn't you just take a break? Why do you need to take another break? This is exercising your superpowers, do you know? Why do you always think about being lazy? Have you forgotten that you are a great mother? The big one fooled the old lady and opened his mouth. Oh oh, Shanadu had to grit his teeth and persist. At this moment, Bai Fong suddenly felt the raft start to sway slightly. He stretched out his head and looked out, only to see six or seven carp kings vigorously flapping their tails around the raft. Water splash jump water splash jump water splash jump the carp kings crazily used their skills, but nothing happened except for making the raft shake unharmed, hey guy, let's find fault. It's up to you. Bai Yi, give them some color to see. Use your imagination. Bai Fong possessed the essence of the play, and those who didn't know this tone thought they were encountering a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Shanai, Bai Yi was also very interested in bullying children, and his eyes sparkled with blue light. In an instant, eight carp kings landed on the raft one after another. Pop, 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 pop they still use splashing water with great effort, but their movements are so clumsy that they cannot even turn over. Hey he he, looking at these eight lively carp kings, Bai Fong felt an evil thought rising in his heart. Hurry up and swim, don't slack off. About ten minutes later, Bai Fong waved his small whip, vine, and drove away the carp king, who was tied in front of the raft by spider silk. The carp kings were afraid of being beaten and swung their tails quickly, swimming with their rafts. Woohoo cool! Feeling the sea breeze rushing past his ears, Bai Fong cheered. This speed is much faster, and indeed, the affairs in the water still need to be handled by professionals in the water supply. Three days passed in the blink of an eye, and the vast sea was still boundless. Bai Fong did not see any trace of the coastline, and his heart couldn't help but feel a little restless. Several carp kings are still being squeezed by him with labor. However, Bai Fong did not let them work for nothing. When they rested, he would use his golden fingers to comb the original energy inside the carp kings. Although the carp kings were foolish, they instinctively knew that white maple had given them great benefits, so later they hardly needed white maple to whip them. They worked extremely hard. Because the carp kings worked too hard, Bai Fong couldn't remember how far he had drifted at sea these days. As the sun rose to the center of their heads, Bai Yi and the others began to stop for lunch. Biting the fruit in his mouth, Bai Fong felt like he had almost forgotten the taste of human food. Bai Yi was raised by the fruit of the tree. These days, Bai Yi has also been very restless. While eating, he boredly breaks the fruit in his hand and feeds it to the carp kings one by one. After a few days of nourishing with his golden fingers, Bai Feng's appearance as the carp kings became more and more majestic. The red scales were as bright as fire, and even the originally dull eyes had a hint of brilliance. Milu, at this moment, they suddenly heard a long and profound cry, and then a rainbow appeared in the sky. At the end of the rainbow, a slender figure faintly appeared in the middle. Milu, the cry came again, and the rainbow disappeared, replaced by a beautiful snake-shaped Pokemon. Sleeping trough, minus. By phone couldn't help but exclaim in surprise. This was the first time he had seen such a beautiful creature in reality, with its brilliant scales shining brightly under the refraction of sunlight, so beautiful that it was not like any mortal being. At this moment, Bai Fong truly understood why Minas was called the number one beauty in the world of Pokemon. There is an insurmountable gap between images, game modeling, and physical objects, and only by truly seeing them can one understand what beauty is to the extreme. The Minas also seemed to have noticed the white maple and the others. It turned its head and looked from afar, its eyes calm and calm. Milu, there was a ethereal tone in Minas's voice, and under the comfort of this voice, all the annoyance accumulated by Bai Fong and Bai Yi in the past few days was swept away. 
In the dazzling and mesmerizing gaze of Bai Fong and his companions, Minas disappeared into the seawater. After a long time, Bai Fong and a few Pokemon gradually regained their senses. You guys should also argue for some energy and strive to evolve into the Tyrannosaurus Rex as soon as possible. After Minas disappeared, Bai Fong felt a sense of loss and couldn't help but pat the heads of several carp kings. Seeing Minas, he couldn't help but think of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Alright, let's continue our journey after finishing. In the blink of an eye, two more days passed when a strong wind suddenly blew over the previously calm sea. With the passage of time, the waves grew higher and higher, causing the small raft to sway left and right. If it weren't for Bai Ye's superpowers to stabilize it in time, the raft would probably have overturned long ago. Boom! A golden light flashed through the sky, followed by a roaring thunder. Bai Fong looked up and saw black clouds rolling back and forth in the air, like intertwined and angry dragons, eagerly trying to pierce a hole in the sky. While then the pouring rain poured down, and the small raft finally shattered under the merciless beating of the waves. Although Bai Yi had tried his best to defend with superpowers, it was still of no use. Sometimes human power is too insignificant in front of the great power of nature. White maple and white leaves fall into the water at the same time. Bai Fong was too young to even struggle in such a big wave, and was directly thrown into the water by a huge wave. Bai Yi wanted to go and save Bai Fong, but a huge wave came in and it was also thrown into the water. If its strength is stronger, it can use its superpowers to directly fly out of the water with white maple. But with its current strength, obviously not. A few carp kings are in better condition, after all, they are water-based Pokémon. After Bai Foam was submerged in water, they swam to his side against the huge waves, trying to lift him out of the water. However, their size was too small, and the waves rolled too violently. Soon, they were scattered by the impact of the seawater. Am I going to die? After being filled with water, Bai Feng's consciousness began to blur. Suddenly, a white light shone on the sea, which was so prominent in the dim and oppressive sky. In the radiance, a carp king grew longer and longer under the beating of the waves, eventually transforming into a fierce Pokémon with a deep blue body. Rampage Carp Dragon a carp king unexpectedly evolved into a Tyrannosaurus in a critical moment. On, the newborn Tyrannosaurus Rex looked up and roared at the sky, as if venting its dissatisfaction, then plunged into the water. When it resurfaced, Bai Fong and Bai Yi were already lying on its back. After an unknown amount of time, the unconscious Bai Fong slowly opened his eyes and said, I, didn't die. Immediately, he found himself lying on the back of a blue giant beast. Shanai Nai, baby, you wake up. Seeing Bai Fong wake up, Bai Yi excitedly rushed over and hugged him. What happened? Did we be saved by a passing Tyrannosaurus Rex? Bai Fong, whose mind had not yet turned, looked at Bai Yi and asked. Shanai Shanai Nai, Bai Yi told Bai Fong about the evolution of the Carp King, which made Bai Fong sigh for his good luck. At this moment, the wind and waves have passed, and the sea has regained calmness. The turbulent scene before seemed like a dream. The dazzling sunlight shone through the clouds and dyed the seawater golden. The stormy carp dragon, carrying white maple and white leaf, swam aimlessly on the sea because they had lost their compass. At this point, they had already lost their direction. Gu at this moment, Bai Ye's stomach suddenly rang, and Bai Fong comforted it helplessly, saying, Hold on. Not only did the compass get lost, but their food and fresh water were also swept away by the waves. Shanai Shanai, suddenly, Bai Ye let out a cry of surprise, and it suddenly stood up from the back of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, pointing to the distance and jumping and jumping. Bai Fong followed the direction pointed by Bai Yi and saw a ship slowly approaching with the afterglow of the sunset. It's a ship. Someone. We're saved. Storm Carp Dragon, catch up with that ship. Bai Fong excitedly said to Storm Carp Dragon. 
As for whether the people on the ship are good or bad, this is not the time to consider. Roar, the stormy carp dragon nodded and took the slower swimming carp kings into its mouth. Then, with a fierce acceleration, it quickly chased towards the ship. About half an hour later, the Tyrannosaurus Rex finally caught up with the ship, panting heavily. The endurance of Pokémon like the Tyrannosaurus Rex is not good, and it is very difficult to swim continuously for such a long time. Hey! By foam shouted and waved hard at the people on the ship, and a sailor standing on the deck quickly spotted him. Hmm. A child, a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and a Chanadu. How could there be such a young child on this vast sea? Did you encounter a shipwreck? The sailor quickly pulled out a fairy ball from his body, and with a flash of white light, a big-billed gull appeared beside him. Big-billed gull, bring that child up. At this moment, Bifone looked at the Tyrannosaurus Rex below him and asked, Tyrannosaurus Rex, do you want to come with me? After spending a few days together, coupled with the kindness of saving his life, Bifone had already developed feelings for the Tyrannosaurus Rex and several carp kings. The fierce carp dragon hesitated for a moment and slowly shook its head. Well. Then we'll be separated here. You and the carp king and the others need to take care. At this moment, Bifong felt both a bit disappointed and relieved. Disappointment is due to wanting to separate from the Tyrannosaurus Rex and not knowing if we can meet again in the future. I breathed a sigh of relief because his future was uncertain. Even if Bailalong followed him, he might not be able to live a good life, maybe he would be more carefree outside. Climbing onto the back of the big build gull with Bai Yi, Bai Fong waved his hand again towards the Tyrannosaurus below, goodbye, thank you for your help these past few days. The storm carp dragon and the seven carp kings looked up at the white maple getting farther and farther away, and after a while, they disappeared into the water. After boarding the ship, Bai Fong found several more people on the deck, and they all gathered around Bai Fong, talking nonsense. Then the white maple people became numb because he couldn't understand a word of what these people were saying. Seeing Bai Fong staring blankly at them, one of the sailors frowned and said, This child hasn't been soaking in the sea for too long, has he? Captain Sanders crouched down and looked gently at Bai Fong, asking, Child, what's your name? However, the child still stared at him in silence. At this moment, he saw that the little boy seemed to have something on his mind. He muttered a strange tone to the nearby Shanadu, and then a smile appeared on his face. Is this child really a fool? Sanders couldn't help but think. Of course, Bifoam is not a fool. He laughed because he discovered something interesting. Although he doesn't understand the language of the world here, Pokémon can, so as long as he translates through Bai Yi, he can know what the other person is saying. As for why Pokémon can understand both the language of Bai Feng's original world and the language of the world here, Bai Feng is unknown. Maybe it's a special talent. However, even so, both sides still cannot communicate directly because the other side cannot understand the language of the elves. End of this chapter. Chapter 3 Settlement in Bai City You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Settlement in Bai City Due in the early morning, a ship sounded its long and deep whistle and slowly sailed into the port of Bai City. Bai City is a famous port city and leisure resort in the Carlos region, so even in the early morning, the ports here are already busy. The waters near the port are filled with boats of all sizes, including giant cruise ships, medium dot sized yachts, and small fishing boats as soon as the ship docks, a large number of people will emerge on the dock, including unloading workers, inbound tourists, and hawkers. Pedestrians will come and go in an endless stream, with one after another shouting louder than the other. How long has it been since by phone saw such a lively scene? It's been so long that he almost forgot what the human world looks like. He stood excitedly on the deck, watching the dock getting closer and closer to him, and his heart couldn't help but become surging. It had been more than ten days since he was rescued by Captain Sanders and his team, and after more than ten days of sea navigation, the ship finally docked. 
After a flurry of communication between them, Captain Sanders and others had learned that by phone could not understand what they were saying, but could understand their meaning through Pokémon. Although surprised by Bai Feng's ability to understand the language of Pokémon and wondering why he couldn't speak despite having no intellectual or language system issues, Sanders and others were grateful that the child they saved was not a little fool. After more than ten days of difficult communication, Bai Feng has roughly learned that Sanders and his team are an official exploration team formed by the Pokémon Alliance. This time they went out to explore an unknown relic, but unexpectedly saved by Fong on their way back. In addition, during these ten days, Bai Fong actively learned a new language from the people on the boat through Bai Yi. Everyone is willing to teach him. Not only does his tone of voice slow down a lot, but they also actively answer any questions Bai Fong has. For example, when Bai Fong points to a chair, everyone will tell him how to say it, when pointing to the sky, Everyone will tell him what the sky says by phone was extremely grateful that he had met a group of kind and lovely people. Sanders saw by phone staring intently at the crowd on the shore and walked over to him, saying, Once we get ashore, I'll have Mogu take you to the police station. Please ask Miss Jun Sha to take you home. Mogu was the first young sailor to discover by phone. By phone nodded. In fact, he doesn't have any family. Wherever he and Bai Yi go, it's his home. Because Captain Sanders couldn't understand what Bai Feng and Bai Yi were saying, and Bai Feng's newly learned language had not yet reached the point where he could communicate, they still didn't know that Bai Feng was a wild man raised by Pokemon on a deserted island. They thought he had only encountered a shipwreck and temporarily separated from his family. Everyone couldn't understand what Bai Feng was saying, so he was too lazy to explain and couldn't understand at all. After landing, Captain Sanders was entrusted to Sailor Mogu by Bai Feng due to business matters. Mogu is an enthusiastic young man. On the way to the police station, he talked incessantly about his hometown of Bai City to Bai Feng. Bai City is indeed a beautiful city, perfectly combining the sea, trees, and modern light rail, making the entire city full of rich natural and cultural atmosphere. After judgment, Bai Feng felt that this was a very suitable place to settle down, with both the prosperity of a big city and a strong natural atmosphere. During a pleasant conversation, the two arrived at the Bai City Police Station. After learning about their intentions, the police received them with great solemnity from Miss Junsa. After Mogu told Miss Jun Sha about Bai Feng's inability to communicate normally, she said, Well, then we won't be able to effectively obtain information from this child. After thinking for a while, Miss Jun Sha suddenly patted her forehead and said, By the way, I have a solution. You guys wait for me for a while. After that, she quickly ran away. After Miss Jun Sha returned again, she had a beautiful older sister wearing a light green long dress by her side. This is my good friend Maggie, Miss Junsha introduced to Bai Feng and Imogu. Her beard can help us communicate with this child. She then looked at Maggie and said, Chi Chi, please. Maggie nodded gently and then took out a pocket ball. With a flash of light, a golden-haired hoodie appeared in front of everyone. After Hu Di came out, he looked at his trainer in confusion, but then he didn't know what Maggie had said in his ear. He skillfully took a pen and a blank notebook from the trainer's hand. Miss Jun Sha explained with a smile, Chi Chi's beard can recognize and write. Since this child can communicate with elves, he just needs to tell who what he wants to say, and then who will write it down and tell us. Mo Gu exclaimed in surprise, how impressive. It's actually a cultural paradise. Bai Feng also sighed in his heart about Hu Di's intelligence. With the help of Hu Di, Miss Jun Sha and her team quickly figured out the true situation of Bai Feng. Mogu was shocked and said, Didn't you die at sea? Did this Shanadot raise you? No wonder such a big child can't even speak. After learning about Bai Feng's situation, Miss Jun Sha asked, Children, do you have any plans? Do you want to stay in Bai City? Bai Feng shook his head and nodded. He can be said to have no knowledge of this world now, and naturally has no plans. 
He knew about Pokémon in his past life, but knowing about Pokémon and understanding the Pokémon world are two different things. Staying in Bai City is a good suggestion. Well. Since you're willing to stay in our city of Bai, I'll take you to apply for your ID first, and then consider how to place you, Miss Junsha said after thinking for a moment. To survive in this world, one must indeed have an identity. Bai Feng nodded obediently, with a posture of fully listening to you. Seeing that Bai Feng wanted to stay in Bai City, Mo Gu rubbed his head with a very discerning expression on his face and said, Good kid, believe me, you won't regret staying in Bai City. Seeing that Miss Jun Sha had already made arrangements for Bai Feng, Mo Gu said again, Miss Jun Sha, Bai Feng has been entrusted to you. If I have anything else to do, I'll leave first. Miss Jun Sha nodded and said, Don't worry, I will take care of this little guy. After bidding farewell to Bai Feng again, Mo Gu left the police station. Bai Feng's ID card was handled smoothly. He was young and the situation was special, so the registered residence office opened a green channel for him. The matter of where Bai Feng's household registration went caused everyone to worry. Why not send this child to an orphanage, suggested a police officer. That's all I can do. Miss Jun Sha frowned lightly and said. So, Bai Feng's destination was decided. Bai Feng spent the night dealing with him at the police station, and dinner was bought by the police officers for him and Bai Yi. Miss Jun Sha came to pick him up early the next morning and kindly brought breakfast for him and Bai Yi. After Bai Feng finished breakfast, Miss Jun Sha took out a pocket ball and handed it to him, saying, I will take you to the orphanage later. Consider this pocket ball a gift I gave you. You can put the Shanadot inside. Bai Feng gratefully took the elf ball and clumsily thanked Miss Jun Sha in the language of the elf world. Bai Yi is not unfamiliar with Pokemon balls. After encountering humans, he has seen this magical prop multiple times, and Bai Feng has also privately introduced him in detail about Pokemon balls. So when Bai Feng asked him if he wanted to score the Pokemon ball, he nodded decisively. Bai Feng is not surprised by this. His mother has a lazy personality and always follows her with a whip during training, such as using metaphors, exaggeration, or falsehood. Now that she has the opportunity to sleep in the Pokemon ball, she certainly cannot help but hope for it. After Bai Feng finished breakfast, Miss Jun Sha stood up and said, I'll take you to the orphanage now. I've already said hello to the dean over there, and when we get there, she will arrange for you. Bai Feng nodded, full of anticipation for his future life. Before going to the orphanage, Miss Jun Sha took Bai Feng to take a bath, helped him trim his messy hair, and bought him a suitable outfit. Bai Feng was very grateful for this and sighed at how thoughtful Sister Jun Sha was. The clothes that Bai Feng was wearing before were given by a member of Captain Sanders. Even though the member was not tall, his clothes were still too big for Bai Feng, an eight-year-old child, and he struggled to walk. After some care, Bai Feng's appearance changed greatly. Although his skin was still dark, he could already be called a handsome young man. Bai Feng is very satisfied with his skin bag. Miss Jun Sha looked around Bai Feng and then joked, Hmm very good. Dean Mary will definitely like you. The geographical environment of Bai City is very unique, with one side facing the sea and the other side facing the mountains. These two sides are divided in half by the light rail that spans the entire city. The bustling areas of the city, such as commercial areas, residential areas, tourist areas, etc., are all located on the side by the sea, while pastures, farmland, orchards, etc., are on the side by the mountains. It is precisely this clear distinction that gives Bai City its name. The Qingyao Orphanage, where Bai Feng is about to settle down, is located on the side of the mountain. Taking the light rail train, the two quickly crossed a cliff, and not far above the cliff was the Blue Bird Orphanage. Standing at the entrance of the orphanage, Bai Feng carefully scrutinized the place where he might be staying for a long time in the future. The orphanage does not occupy a large area, with only three houses located together in a mouth shape, with a small courtyard in the middle. 
When the two of them arrived here, there was a woman in her forties hanging clothes in the yard. After seeing Miss Junsa and the little boy beside her, the woman immediately put down her assistant and walked over quickly, saying, Miss Junsa, you're here. This is the child who wants to live with us. Miss Junsha nodded and said, That's right, this child's name is Bai Fong. I'll ask you to take care of him in the future. He's in a special situation and has some language barriers. Please pay more attention to him in your daily life. Miss Jun Sha told the dean in detail about Bai Feng's situation. After explaining to the dean, Miss Jun Sha asked Bai Feng to release Bai Yi and then use Bai Ye's mouth to say to him, in the future, listen more to Dean Mary's words. If you encounter difficulties, you can also go to the police station to seek help from me. Bai Feng nodded solemnly and thanked Miss Jun Sha again. After Miss Jun Sha left, Dean Mary took Bai Feng's hand and led him towards the yard, introducing the situation of Qingya Orphanage. My name is Mary, the director of this orphanage. You can call me Mary Dean, or you can call me Mary Grandma. The scale of Qingya Orphanage is not large, with only Dean Mary as the staff member, and the number of orphans taken in is not large. Currently, there are only six children, and with the addition of the new Bai Feng, there are a total of seven. It is precisely because the number of people in Qingya Orphanage is not large, the atmosphere and environment are simple, that Miss Jun Sha placed Bai Feng here. Bai Feng listened attentively as Dean Meili introduced the situation in the orphanage, and suddenly noticed several small heads sneaking around in a nearby corner. Dean Mary also noticed them, so she reached out and loudly called out to them, What are you doing? Come over quickly, let me introduce our new members to you. So, four little guys walked out of the corner, three men and one woman, all looking younger than Bai Feng. This is the new brother Bai Feng, and you should get along well with him in the future. Dean Mary first introduced Bai Feng and Bai Yi to the children, and this is Bai Yi, the family of Bai Feng. You should treat Bai Yi as kindly as you treat Bai Feng. Got it, Grandma Dean the four children shouted in unison, especially with curiosity in their eyes towards Bai Yi. Subsequently, the dean introduced four children to Bai Feng. The tallest boy is named Yang Tai. He is six years old and looks like a lively and lively little guy, next is Kai Kaizi, who is the same age as Yang Tai and has a relatively quiet personality. Below are five-year-old Ihue and four-year-old Xiaoyu. Ihue appeared a bit shy in personality, hiding behind Kai Kaizi from beginning to end, afraid to look directly at Bai Feng and Bai Yi. Xiao Yu seems to be a bit familiar with the past. If it weren't for Ihue's pull, he might have rushed to the side of Bai Feng and Bai Yi. In addition to the four present, there are also two children in the orphanage, one named Dong Yu and the other named Rima. Rima is just a one-year-old baby, currently sleeping in the room, so let's not talk about it for now. The other is currently the eldest child at Qingya Orphanage, named Dong Yu, who is nine years old. But he is not at home now, but has gone to school. Although Qingya Orphanage may seem so large, it was actually established with official investment from Bai City. In other words, Dean Mary is still someone who eats public meals. The children who are taken into this orphanage have a very good benefit, which is to be able to attend public schools for free after the age of seven. Of course, the public will only support you in completing the most basic education. If you want to continue your studies, you will have to bear all the expenses yourself. End of this chapter Chapter 4 Little Arrow Sparrow You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 4 Little Arrow Sparrow After the children got to know each other briefly, Dean Mary said to Yang Tai, Ong Tai, take by phone to his room and I'll prepare some things for him. Understood. Yang said to Dean Mary in a funny tone. Brother Bai Feng, come with me. He said as he bounced and led Bai Feng forward. Because communication was not very smooth, Bai Feng didn't speak much, only Yang Tai was chattering alone there. After waiting at the door of the room, he skillfully opened it. Here it is, this room was still cleaned by me and Kai Kaizi together. Yang Tai said proudly. Thank you, 
by phone gratefully said. He briefly glanced at the room and it was indeed cleaned very clean and tidy. Although there were not many decorations in the room, everything was already there, and at first glance, it was clear that he had been prepared. After Bai Feng finished visiting the room, Nan Tai finally looked at Bai Yi and asked curiously, Brother Bai Feng, is this your Pokemon? Does mom count as her own Pokemon? Should I count it? Bai Feng nodded reluctantly. It's the first time I've seen Pokemon up close. It's amazing. Yang Tai looked at Bai Yi with envy on her face. However, although he has a lively personality, he behaves very well and does not rashly approach Bai Yi. Brother Bai Feng, why are you always silent? Seeing Bai Feng either nod or shake his head, or remain silent, Yang asked in confusion. Bai Feng didn't feel difficult to get along with. At this moment, Dean Mary walked in and happened to hear Yang Tai's words. He instructed him, your brother Bai Feng used to have very little contact with people, so he hasn't learned how to speak yet. You and Kai Kaizi can teach him more in their daily lives. Okay, it's all on us. Although Yang Tai felt it strange that Bai Feng was too old to learn how to speak, he still readily agreed and was happy to be able to help the dean. Dean Mary placed the things she held in her arms on Bai Feng's bed and explained to him, these clothes and daily necessities were from before Dong Yu, and now he can't use them anymore. I saw you don't have much luggage, so I found them all. Bai Feng gratefully said, thank you. This was really a timely help. Dean Mary shook her head and said, you don't need to thank me. They're all old things. Just don't mind. We don't have enough funds here, so many things can't be bought just because you want to. Bai Feng nodded to show understanding, even if his clothes were all old, it was better than him wearing leaves on the island. In this way, Bai Feng settled down in the Blue Bird Orphanage, and the children in the orphanage were very well behaved, warmly welcoming Bai Feng's arrival. At noon, he also saw two other children. Rima and Dongyu. Lime is usually carried by Kai Kaizi. She is a very cute little girl, like a delicate porcelain doll. However, according to Dean Mary, the child has a throat problem and may not be able to speak in the future. Dong Yu is a somewhat thin boy, one year older than Bai Feng, but about the same size as Bai Feng. His personality is a bit cold, not very talkative, but his behavior is very polite, and his attitude towards Bai Feng is also quite good. He even took the initiative to go to Bai Feng's room to greet him after school. Dean Mary specially made a sumptuous lunch at noon to celebrate Bai Feng's joining the Blue Bird Orphanage. The orphanage usually eats simple food, so it's rare to have a sumptuous meal, and everyone is very happy. The foolish Xiao Yu even said, it would be great if Bai Feng could join us every day. Everyone thinks this is both funny and a bit sad. At this moment, Bai Feng was extremely grateful that the Tyrannosaurus Rex had not followed him back. Otherwise, under these conditions, how could he support others? Two months had passed in the blink of an eye, and Bai Feng had fully adapted to life at the Qingya Orphanage. Although life here is not wealthy, it is much better than when he was on the island. And everyone here has a very harmonious relationship, although the days are ordinary, they are peaceful and peaceful. During this period, Miss Jun Sha and Captain Sanders both visited Bai Feng and brought him many daily necessities. Especially Miss Jun Sha, she knew that Bai Feng was following Bai Yi, so she specially sent a can of energy blocks to Bai Feng. In fact, the mainstream food of Pokemon in the Carlos region is Pokemon Pokemon, but Pokemon are not easy to store and can easily spoil after a few days, so Miss Junsa changed to sending energy blocks. Seeing that Bai Feng had adapted well in the Blue Bird Orphanage, Miss Jun Sha and Captain Sanders left with peace of mind. During this month, Bai Feng has done a lot of things. Every day, he helps Dean Mary with household chores, spends his leisure time learning the language of this world, and trains Bai Yi. In terms of learning a new language, Yang Tai and his children have been very helpful to him, not only responding to his requests, but also pointing out and correcting his pronunciation errors in a timely manner every time. 
It is precisely because of this that Bifong has made great progress in language communication in the past two months. Now, even without the help of Bai Ye's translation, he can roughly understand what others are saying, even if he stutters when speaking. In terms of training Bai Ye, Bai Feng has made new discoveries, which is thanks to the energy cube sent by Miss Junsha. Previously, he discovered that Pokemon would automatically absorb special energy that is free in the air, thereby storing it in the body and forming the original energy of Pokemon itself. But after consuming the energy blocks, Bai Feng was surprised to find that the efficiency of increasing the energy of the Pokemon source by the energy blocks was much higher than that of absorbing it independently from the air. So if Bai Yi wants to quickly become stronger, she must use foods such as energy blocks or Pokemon to assist with exercise for a long time. But all of this requires money, and this is exactly what Bai Feng lacks the most. To be honest, Bai Feng has not yet considered what he will do in this Pokemon world in the future. Although considering this issue is not urgent for an eight-year-old child, he is not really an eight-year-old child, so it is very important to make a plan for the future as soon as possible. However, no matter what career he wants to pursue in the future, he will not give up on cultivating Bai Yi. On the one hand, it is because it relates to his own survival ability, and on the other hand, it is because Bai Yi is his mother. He doesn't want his mother to be a weak, unable to protect herself, and unable to endure hardships. Because of the existence of special creatures like Pokemon, this world cannot be peaceful everywhere, and there may be danger one day. Fortunately, his golden finger is very awesome. After this period of continuous purification and refinement, the original energy in the body of Zenado has been greatly improved in terms of both quality and purity, and its combat effectiveness has also been significantly improved. It is because its ability to control its own source energy is too weak. On that day, Bai Feng decided to go out and test Bai Ye's combat power, so he shouted loudly. Bai Ye, come with me for a trip. At this moment, Bai Yi was watching TV with Kai Kaizi and the others in the living room. When he heard Bai Feng call him, he reluctantly stood up. Television is a novel thing for Bai Yi, who has just come into contact with the human world. Therefore, during this period, Bai Yi has been addicted to television and cannot extricate herself. Even a single advertisement can be watched with relish. At this moment, Bai Feng suddenly called at the same level of discomfort as being awakened by noise early in the morning. Brother Bai Feng, are you going out? Kai Kaizi turned around and asked. Bai Feng nodded and answered word by word, back. In the woods. Before dinner. Oh, I'll tell the dean's grandmother to be careful outside. Kai Kaizi understood his meaning instantly. So, Bai Feng went out with Bai Yi. The forest in Bai Feng's mouth is behind the hillside not far from the Qingya orphanage. According to Dong Yu, there are often elves appearing there, so today he plans to try his luck. Turning over the mountain slope, Bai Feng indeed saw a small forest not far away. He headed straight with Bai Yi and found several small arrow sparrows playing on the branches in the forest. The little arrow sparrow was not afraid of humans. When they saw white maple and white leaf approaching, they curiously looked at each other without any signs of flying away. Little arrow bird, can we discuss something with you? Bai Feng asked cautiously, afraid that he might startle the other party away. Yagu. The little arrow sparrow closest to Bai Feng and the others tilted its head in confusion. Bai Feng continued, I would like to invite you to have a battle with my Chanadu. Originally, Bai Feng thought it would take some persuasion to persuade the little arrow sparrow, but to his surprise, the little arrow sparrow was still a battle maniac and nodded in agreement. After finding a piece of open space, Bai Feng asked little arrow bird and Bai Yi to stand on either side of the space, and then he stood outside as a judge. He had no intention of directing Bai Yi. If you're ready, now the battle begins. Yagu, as by phone signaled, the emotionally charged little arrow sparrow launched an attack first, and its speed was very fast, directly transforming into a white light and colliding with Bai Yi. Flash of Lightning Under Tsang's busy schedule, 
Bai Yi used her most skilled skill, Nian Li. A blue light flashed in its eyes, and the small arrow sparrow in the sprint was instantly fixed in mid-air. The island where Bai Feng and his companions used to live was not a dangerous place, and there were not many Pokemon on the island, so Bai Yi used to live a mediocre life. This has resulted in not only being a part of its combat effectiveness, but also having few skills. After repeated verification, combined with his understanding of Pokemon in his previous life, Bai Feng roughly knew that the skills of Bai Yi Hui included four. Psychic power, magical radiance, magical flame, and healing wave. But what it can truly use smoothly is its mental power and healing wave. Bai Yi is proficient in using her psychic powers because when she was on the island, she often had to use her psychic powers to pick fruits from trees, I am proficient in using healing waves because Pokemon on the island often come to seek treatment after getting injured in fights. As for the more powerful skills of magic shine and magic flame, they are often abandoned because they are not commonly used. Yagu Yagu Yagu, the accused little arrow sparrow flapped its wings wildly, trying to break free from the shackles of its imagination, but the next second it was thrown out. Pia G the little arrow sparrow collided with a tree not far away and fainted directly. Uh the speed at which this little arrow sparrow was instantly killed was too fast, and Bai Feng didn't even react. However, after all, Bai Yi is the ultimate evolutionary Pokemon, with basic abilities that are much higher than those of the little arrow sparrow. He was also trained by Bai Feng with his golden fingers for several months, and his strength is slightly stronger than that of the wild little arrow sparrow, which is understandable. This wave is completely level crushing, nothing else. Bai Feng walked up to the little arrow sparrow, picked it up from the ground, and then injected his golden finger energy into its body. Soon, the little arrow sparrow woke up with a contented expression on its face. Ah Goo, it's so comfortable, little arrow bird, are you okay? asked Bai Feng. Yagu Yagu Yagu, it's okay, it's okay. One more, one more. The little arrow sparrow climbed up with one bone and stood on Bai Feng's palm, bouncing and jumping. Bai Feng continued to use his golden fingers to comb through the original energy inside little arrow bird's body, and at the same time said to it, little arrow bird, it's a bit difficult for you to deal with my white leaf alone. Why don't you call all your friends here and attack white leaf together? After finishing the task, can I just sort out the energy in your body like this still coming? The white leaf on the side suddenly felt a little unhappy, but it dared not refute. Really? Although I am my mother, by phone should listen to me. The old mother's family status is not optimistic. Yagu Yagu, okay, okay. You wait, I'll be back soon. The little arrow sparrow agreed quickly. Sure enough, the little arrow sparrow returned in no time, followed by about ten small arrow sparrows of similar size. But later on, these little sparrows didn't have a beginning, so they had to be fooled. They collectively demanded to experience a great health care first. If the effect was really as good as the little sparrow at the beginning said, then they were willing to help. Okay, okay. By phone is helpless, he really doesn't want to suffer any losses. So all the little sparrows experienced the pleasure of great health, and the indescribable moans in the forest rose higher and higher. I wonder if someone had done something to the elves in this forest. After understanding the benefits of great health care, the little sparrows could no longer refuse Bai Feng's proposal, so they had to stay together to work for Bai Feng. In this way, Bai Yi began his training journey of single-handedly challenging a group of small arrow sparrows. Bai Yi, who only knows how to proficiently use the attack skill of Nian Li, is too simplistic in terms of attack methods. Therefore, Bai Feng demands that when it is besieged by the small arrow sparrows, it must also use the magic sparkle and magic flame at the appropriate time, and not only use Nian Li as a skill. The level of Bai Yi is indeed higher than that of the little arrow sparrow, but it may not necessarily be stronger in the use of skills than them. In addition, it has never been surrounded by so many elves before, and for a moment, it was in a panic, and soon it became disheveled. On the other hand, the little sparrows, 
although they looked very disheveled, each one was full of fighting spirit. Even if they were repeatedly beaten by Bai Yi, they would still charge forward without hesitation. It has to be said that these little sparrows are capable birds, as long as the salary is paid properly, they will be accompanied by beating and scolding. End of this chapter Chapter 5 Surprise Discoveries You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Surprise Discoveries Unconsciously, the sun has already set on the West Mountain. After half an afternoon of fighting, both White Leaf and Little Arrow Sparrow were exhausted and lying on the grass one by one. Bai Feng sat next to them and massaged them one by one with his golden fingers, which not only relieved their fatigue but also purified the original energy in their bodies, which can be said to have many benefits. Compared to the White Leaves, the primary energy in the Little Sparrows is much less. The White Maple naturally combs and purifies them more easily, and in no time, all the little sparrows' health care is over. The little sparrows flew up and chattered to thank by phone, clearly satisfied with the salary he gave. Will you still come tomorrow? If you do, the treatment will be the same as today. By phone asked the little sparrows. Exercise requires perseverance, and the little sparrows performed very well today. By phone is not too satisfied with their work attitude, so he intends to sign a long-term contract with them. As soon as the little sparrows heard of this good news, they excitedly agreed and made an agreement with Bai Feng to meet here again tomorrow. At this moment, Bai Yi was already left with nothing to love. The thought of going through this experience every day in the future made Bao Xing feel hopeless. When Bai Feng arrived home, he happened to encounter Dong Yu returning from school. He saw Bai Feng and Bai Yi returning from the hillside and asked, Bai Feng, did you go out to train with Bai Yi? Yes, Bai Feng nodded, speaking with a slight stutter. Dong Yu asked casually, does Bai Feng want to become a trainer in the future? Bai Feng shook his head honestly and said, I don't know. I didn't think about it. Dong Yu nodded and didn't speak anymore. He walked into the yard with Bai Feng, but there was a hint of envy in his gaze towards Bai Yi. During dinner in the evening, Dean Mary asked Dong Yu, Dong Yu, I heard that your school is going to fill out a future intention form recently. Have you figured out what you want to do in the future? Dong Yu is about to turn 10, which is one of the most important dividing points in life for children in Pokemon world, as they face the choice of whether to become a trainer in the future. Most children will complete their primary education by the age of 10, and if they want to continue their intermediate education, they will face career choices. If you aspire to become a trainer, here trainers refer to multiple professions including traditional trainers, coordination trainers, breeders, etc., you either choose to take Pokémon on trips and competitions, or stay at school and choose Pokémon science to learn more in depth Pokémon knowledge. If you want to work in another industry, then choose to continue studying in general subjects until you graduate from secondary school and then you can start working. If you want to have a higher education and learn more professional knowledge, you can also strive to be admitted to higher education institutions for further education. For the general residents of Pokémon world, primary and secondary education are compulsory and must be completed by every non-trainee profession. Nowadays, Dong Yu, who is almost 10 years old, is facing such a life choice. I have already thought about it. I want to choose a general subject and graduate early to work, Dong Yu answered Dean Mary without hesitation. Dean Mary warned him, this is related to your future, you must think carefully. Dong Yu nodded and said, I know. I've been thinking about it for a long time, don't worry. At this moment, Xiao Yu, who was working hard to eat, suddenly looked up and said in confusion, Dong Yu, didn't you tell us before that you wanted to become a trainer like the four heavenly kings in the future? Looking at the rice grains on Xiaoyo's face, Dong Yu gently wiped them clean and explained, those were all childhood jokes. How could it be so easy to become the four heavenly kings? Xiaoyu Tongyan Tong Yu said, oh, then I will definitely become the four heavenly kings in the future. I'm not joking. Upon hearing this, Dong Yu didn't speak anymore. Instead, 
He turned his head to look at Bai Fong diagonally across from him and said, Bai Fong, how are you practicing speaking? When you have almost no problem communicating with others, I will take you to school. Hmm, thank you. Dong Yu. Bai Fong nodded. At this moment, Dean Mary said with great satisfaction, We, Dong Yu, are becoming more and more like big brothers. Upon hearing these words, Dong Yu, who had been expressionless all along, had a rare hint of shyness on her face. In the blink of an eye, another week passed. During this week, Bai Fong would take Bai Yi to the small forest behind the mountain slope every day to fight against the little sparrows, and Bai Ye's progress was quite obvious. At first, facing attacks from more than ten small sparrows, it could only fight back in a disheveled manner. Every time the battle ended, it was covered in scars and exhausted to the point of collapse. But with the passage of time, as it becomes more proficient in using several skills it knows, its performance in combat becomes more and more effortless. The old mother's personality is indeed lazy, but it has to be said that the spirit of Shinido is indeed excellent in the early days. As long as it is supervised properly, even if it is lazy, it can still take off. Moreover, the strength of the little sparrows is not unchanging. With the help of white maple to purify and condense their original energy, the strength of the little sparrows has also rapidly improved. Along with their changes in appearance, the notable feature is that their essence and spirit have become more abundant, and their fur has become brighter and more glossy. This appearance is a very explosive presence in the entire world of small arrow sparrows. After the battle ended that day, Bai Fong used his golden fingers as usual to help the little sparrows relieve fatigue, while suddenly having a sudden idea in his heart. Hey I have these golden fingers, isn't the most suitable profession for me being a massage technician. I can't justify not taking 99.99 for this skill at once, can I? Why not? Open a big health clinic in the future. Just as Bai Fong was lost in thought, a strong white light suddenly appeared on the small arrow sparrow in his hand, which startled the distracted man. But he soon realized that the little arrow sparrow was about to evolve. Is it evolution again? By phone couldn't help but think of the carp king who had also worked under him. Does his golden finger have the effect of promoting the evolution of elves? Otherwise, it wouldn't have happened to this extent, would it? After all, Pokemon is not something that can evolve. Other little sparrows also noticed the situation here, and they all gathered around, landing on Bai Feng's head, shoulders, thighs. Chattering and discussing the situation of their companions, their words full of excitement. The body size of the white light sparrow is getting bigger and bigger, and in the blink of an eye, it is more than twice as big as before. When the white light completely dissipated, a more heroic bird-shaped Pokémon appeared before everyone's eyes. Rocket Sparrow Agu, the Rocket Sparrow excitedly flew up from White Maple, flapping its wings and circling back and forth in the air, venting its indescribable excitement. All the other little sparrows, upon seeing this, flew up from White Maple and surrounded Rocket Sparrow, constantly expressing their blessings and envy to their companions. After the venting was over, Rocket Bird landed on the ground and solemnly expressed gratitude to Bai Fong. Rocket Bird, I'll check your body. Speaking, Bai Fong squatted down and placed his hand on Rocket Bird, inputting his golden finger energy. The most significant change after Little Arrow Sparrow evolved into Rocket Sparrow is that its internal energy circuit has become larger and more complex, and its efficiency in independently absorbing energy from the outside has also increased. In other words, the energy circuit has also evolved. At this moment, Bai Fong suddenly remembered that Pokémon in previous games had race values. Is the energy circuit here a reflection of different race values? The race values of Arrow Finch and Shanadot in the game are different, and in reality, their energy circuits are also different. Moreover, Shanadot with higher race values has a significantly larger and more complex energy circuit, with higher efficiency in self-absorbing energy and the ability to store more original energy. The race values of the small arrow sparrow in the game and its evolved rocket sparrow are also different. Similarly, in reality, 
the energy circuit of the rocket sparrow has become larger and more complex. Bifong speculates that the energy circuit is not static, and Pokémon can promote the growth or evolution of the internal energy circuit through evolution, exercise, development, and other forms, thereby achieving the goal of becoming stronger. For example, Radha's energy circuit was definitely not as good as a Banhila in its early days, but if Radha's energy circuit is developed to the extreme and continuously evolved, will Radha one day surpass Banhila? Thinking of this, Bifong became extremely excited. His golden fingers could help him see the structure and operation process of the energy circuit inside Bakmeng's body, so wouldn't he have an advantage in helping Bakmeng develop the energy circuit? At this moment, Bifong really wants to kneel down and worship the great god of crossing. The golden finger is too awesome. Starting from a deserted island, having an unknown background, and living in poverty, these are nothing. As long as there is an opportunity to become stronger, everything else can be slowly fought for by oneself. With this golden finger on my body, it's worth it. After enduring the excitement in his heart and completing all the health care for the remaining little sparrows, Bai Fong began to do it for Bai Yi again. After being exhausted, Bai Ye's most anticipated thing is health care, otherwise whether it can persist in these days is uncertain. Sha Na let out a satisfied sigh, and Bai Yi felt that the beating she had received these days was worth it. After the big health care was over, Bai Fong took out the can of energy blocks that Miss Jun Sha gave him, poured out two of them and fed them to Bai Yi. After finishing, he looked into the bottle and found less than ten. We need to find a way to make money. Otherwise, he won't be able to afford his mother's elderly care. Unfortunately, he is too young to go out looking for a job and no one wants him. When Bai Yi had enough to eat, Bai Fong said to it, why don't we wait and look for any tree fruits nearby? Otherwise, when the energy blocks are finished, you will be hungry. Shanai, okay. Bai Yi nodded, knowing that since Bai Fong regained his senses, he had become accustomed to listening to his son's orders. After resting, Bai Fong, Bai Yi, and Rocket Sparrow bid farewell and began searching for fruit in the small forest. However, the tree fruit was not so easy to find. The two of them searched for a long time and didn't even see the shadow of the fruit tree. Just when the mother and son were at a loss, a digging rabbit suddenly popped its head out of the soil. It turned its head and looked around. When it saw by Fong and the others, it immediately wanted to shrink its head into the cave. Bai Ye's eyes were sharp and his hands were fast, and he directly controlled the digging rabbit with his mental power. Shanai Shanai, I asked you a question, do you know where there are fruit trees near here? The digging rabbit trembled and shook its head vigorously, but remained silent. Shanai Shanai, hey hey I'm going to hit you if you don't tell me. Speaking, it even surpassed its tender green fist. The digging rabbit still shivered silently. Bai Yi was so angry by it that she used her imagination to pull it out of the hole. Shanai. Sha. Can you make a sound? I'm so annoyed. At this moment, the digging rabbit finally trembled and pointed in a direction. That's pretty good. Bai Yi nodded satisfied and immediately released the digging rabbit, which disappeared in a flash. The mother and son followed the direction guided by the digging rabbit and walked out of the small forest. In front of them appeared a large grassland, and not far from them was a big tree, which was filled with round blue fruits. Bai Fong walked over and looked at the trees full of fruits in surprise, saying, this should be an orange fruit, isn't it? There are too many fruits here. Shanai Shanai, baby, let's hurry up and pick a lot of fruits. As a mother who once raised her cubs alone in the wild, Bai Yi knew the importance of food. Seeing so much food, she couldn't help but feel excited. Bai Yi had just picked a fruit with her mental strength when she suddenly heard an angry roar coming from behind. The mother and son turned around and saw a digging rabbit emerging from somewhere, looking at them angrily. Damn it! This fruit tree has its owner. At this point, the digging rabbit had launched an attack and saw a large ball of mud controlled by it shooting towards the mother and son. If this is hit, 
the mother and son can be buried directly on the spot. Bai Yi, magic flame. Bai Foam quickly shouted. Shanai, Bai Ye's hands each drew a circle in the air, and suddenly a red pillar of fire erupted from each circle, instantly drowning the mud ball launched by the digging rabbit. Under the tremendous impact of the pillar of fire, the mud ball lost its propulsion and fell directly to the ground. Sigma, oh oh winky face. Digging rabbit was directly scared out of his emoji by Bai Ye's attack, thinking to himself. So strong. Where did these two guys come from? It seems a bit troublesome. As a dominant presence in the vicinity, the digging rabbit claims to be a smart Pokemon. It decisively chooses to give up its attack and points fingers at Bai Fong and Bai Yi for a nagging accusation. The general idea is that they don't talk about martial arts, but do some sneaky things. It took them a long time to cultivate the fruit tree and make it full of fruit. They dare to come and pick peaches, it's absolutely despicable. Bai Fong realized that they had been trapped by the digging rabbit and quickly explained, we didn't know this tree belonged to you either. We apologize. Oh, I'll give you this fruit too. He then brought the fruit from Bai Ye's hand and returned it to the digging rabbit. The digging rabbit took the donkey down the slope, took the fruit and swallowed it in one gulp, then pretended to be generous and expressed forgiveness for the rude behavior of the mother and son. At this moment, Bai Fong suddenly saw a small sapling swaying in the wind next to the orange fruit tree, as if it was the sapling of the orange fruit tree. A thought flashed through his mind and he suddenly thought, I can plant trees and fruits by myself. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Exploring the Mysteries of Tree Fruits you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 6 Exploring the Mysteries of Tree Fruits Perhaps it takes a considerable amount of time from planting fruit trees to growing into fruits, but he is currently lacking everything, just not lacking time. Even the digging rabbit can raise the fruit tree so well, there's no reason why he can't do it. Try it again without spending any money. So he said to the digging rabbit, Is that little sapling also yours? The digging rabbit looked in the direction of Bai Fang's finger and wondered in its heart. Hmm. When did a small sapling grow there? Is it because the fruit pit I threw sprouted? It's just a small sapling. I don't know how long it will wait until it grows and bears fruit, and it doesn't have the energy to take care of another one. So the digging rabbit shook its head, indicating that it was not its own. Bai Fong said happily, Can I take it with me? Seeing that the digging rabbit looked casual, Bai Fong quickly summoned Bai Yi to dig the fruit tree together. Bai Yi dug and thought to himself, Baby is so smart. How could we not have thought that fruit trees could be planted by ourselves before? Bai Fong. I used to be a fool. The mother and son quickly dug out the fruit tree along with the soil at its roots. Although Bai Fong was not a farmer, he had never eaten pork and had never seen a pig run away. He still knows this common sense, which is beneficial for the survival of fruit trees. With the fruit tree in hand, the mother and son happily returned home. The first thing Bai Fong did when he returned home was to go find Dean Meili, who was currently telling a story to Yang Tai and Kai Kaizi. He ran over and said to Dean Mary word by word, Dean Mary. Can I, plant trees? Dean Mary looked at the small sapling held by Bai Yi in surprise and said, Bai Fong, do you want to plant this tree? Bai Fong nodded. Dean Mary pondered for a while, then nodded with a smile and agreed, of course not a problem. Shall I go outside and find a place for you? Bai Fong nodded gratefully and said, thank you, Dean Mary. So Dean Mary stood up and said to the balcony, wait a moment, I'll be right back. Grandma Mary, go ahead and we'll wait for you, Kai Kaizi said obediently, holding Lime in her arms. Under the leadership of Grandma Mary, Bai Fong and the others arrived at the back of the orphanage house. There was a small piece of open space here, which also belonged to the orphanage. Grandma Mary originally wanted to use this place to grow flowers, but she has too many things to spare the energy to take care of the garden, so the place is vacant here. 
Before they came, President Maley found a small shovel and a watering pot for by foam. By foam, do you think planting here is okay? Dean Mary asked. Okay, thank you Dean Mary. With that, by foam chose a place and began to dig with a small shovel. Do you want me to help? Dean Mary asked kindly as she saw by foam pouting his butt and struggling to dig up a small piece of soil. By foam shook his head and refused, I can do it myself. Dean Mary only thought that by foam was a child with a natural disposition, so she suddenly remembered to plant trees and play with them. She didn't take it seriously in her heart for a while. Be careful, don't hurt yourself. I'll go back first. If there's anything, go call me. By foam nodded while digging a pit. After Dean Mary left, by foam dug another pit of suitable size and depth for a while before planting the small saplings. In order to ensure the survival of the saplings, he also pulled out the excess branches and leaves on the tree, leaving only the main trunk. Shanai Shanai, baby, why are you grabbing its leaves? What should I do if I'm caught dead? Aren't we working in vain? Bai Yi is completely clueless about planting trees, looking puzzled and unable to understand Bai Feng's behavior. Bai Feng explained, the seedlings have just moved home and are not adapted to the new place, so the ability of the roots to absorb nutrients is relatively poor. Pulling off excess branches and leaves can reduce water loss and improve the survival rate of the seedlings. Oh, baby, you're really amazing. Bai Yi exclaimed unconsciously. When the tree species are ready, we still need to water them. Mom, it's up to you. His small stature made it difficult for him to fetch a bucket of water. If there's anything, Mom, if there's nothing, Bai Yi. Humph, man. Bai Yi angrily carried the kettle and left. As Bai Yi watered the saplings with a kettle, a hint of inspiration suddenly flashed through Bai Feng's mind. Pokemon, a magical creature with a special energy circuit in its body, can use various and bizarre methods. What about fruit trees? The fruits produced by tree fruit trees have various magical abilities, some can replenish energy, some can eliminate abnormal states, some can increase the intimacy between Pokemon and trainers. Most importantly, the elf food they produce can increase the original energy inside Pokemon. So to some extent, do fruit trees also belong to a special type of organism? Does the fruit tree also have a special energy circuit on its body? By phone boldly guessed and immediately ran to the edge of the sapling to eagerly verify his hypothesis. He placed his hand on the trunk of the sapling and immediately injected his golden finger energy into it. After continuously using great health care for Bai Yi and Xiao Arrow Sparrow during this period, Bai Feng's golden finger energy has become more robust, and his control of golden finger energy is also unparalleled, allowing him to perform more precise operations. As soon as the energy of the golden finger entered the body of the sapling, a emerald green tree-like image appeared in Bai Feng's mind. The tree-like image had lush branches and leaves, and there was a faint special energy flowing inside. There really is. Bai Feng was ecstatic in his heart and his guess was right. The energy inside the sapling is both somewhat similar and significantly different from the original energy in the Pake Mon energy circuit. The energy in Bauka's body is more active and has stronger fluidity. For example, the energy circuit inside Pake Mon is like a wide river, with turbulent waters and an unstoppable momentum flowing from one place to another. The tree-like diagram inside the sapling is like a peaceful stream, very quiet. The energy inside is like a slowly flowing stream, starting from the root of the tree-like diagram and slowly flowing towards the trunk and branches. By foam tried to purify and compress the energy in the tree diagram like regulating the Pake Mon energy circuit, and indeed succeeded. Because the energy properties are different, although there are slight differences in the operation of the two, the principle is the same. Collecting the energy of the golden finger from the sapling's body, by phone carefully observed the condition of the sapling, but did not find any difference from before. Also, it's difficult to see any changes in such a short amount of time. 
Besides, fruit trees don't have their own consciousness like Pokémon, and they can provide timely feedback on their feelings. I need more samples for the experiment. My phone thought so, but where can I find the fruit tree? This small sapling is already hard one, it may be a bit difficult to get more. The next day, when Grandma Meili was going out to buy groceries, Bai Fong followed her and asked, Can I, come together? Dean Mary originally intended to refuse, but then realized that Bai Fong had always lived in the wilderness and had little contact with humans. When he arrived at the orphanage, he could only have limited access to a few children in the yard. He thought it would be better to take him out and interact with more people. Besides, Bai Fong has always been very well behaved. Whenever she has free time, she helps her with household chores with Bai Yi. Occasionally, there is nothing that cannot be agreed to when there is a small request. Okay, but you have to be obedient and not run around, Dean Mary warned. Well, don't worry. Bai Fong assured with a serious expression. Dean Mary felt that he looked cute pretending to be a little adult and playfully patted the back of his head. Bai City is divided in half by a long light rail and a steep cliff, with one side by the sea, making it a bustling urban area, on one side, backed by a mountain, lies the peaceful suburbs, where the Blue Bird Orphanage is located. Although the suburbs are not as bustling as the urban areas, there are also many people living here, so there should be plenty of infrastructure here. Under the leadership of Dean Mary, Bai Fong took a light rail ride and walked a short distance before finally arriving at a bustling vegetable market. Many vendors in the market know Dean Mary and greet her warmly when they see her, and then ask Bai Fong who is following her. After learning that Bai Fong was a new member of the Qingya Orphanage, some vegetable vendors would even give more gifts to Dean Mary when she was buying groceries. As passing by a tree and fruit stall, Bai Fong suddenly pointed to the open space next to the stall and said to Dean Mary, Dean Mary, can I, wait for you here? Dean Mary thought Bai Fong was tired from walking, so she agreed and instructed him, stay here and don't run around. I'll come and pick you up later. Coincidentally, the vendor was also an acquaintance of Dean Mary, so she asked the vendor to help look at Bai Fong. The vendor readily agreed. The vendor is a passionate aunt, probably in her thirties. She has a slightly chubby figure and is not particularly tall, but her smile is particularly infectious and can easily make people feel good about her. After Dean Mary left, the vendor looked at Bai Fong and asked, Child, what's your name? Bai Fong obediently replied, Bai Fong. You're so good, my name is Sarah. You can call me Aunt Sarah. The vendor rubbed Bai Fang's head and handed him two fruits from the stall, here you go. Stay here obediently and don't run around, okay? Call me anytime if you need anything. Bai Fong took the fruit and nodded, then suddenly pointed to a basket under the stall and asked, can I have that? The frame contained some broken fruits that Sarah planned to throw away after closing the stall. She thought Bai Fong wanted to eat those fruits, so she said. Those are all bad, you can't eat them, she said, taking two good fruits from the stall and handing them to Bai Fong. Give you two more, don't eat the bad ones. This time, Bai Fong didn't accept it. He explained word by word, thank you, Aunt Sarah. That. I used it. I won't eat it. Sarah finally felt relieved and dragged the basket out from under the stall, then instructed Bai Fong again, this can be given to you but don't eat it, it will ruin your stomach. Bai Fong nodded obediently, then dragged the frame to the corner of the empty space next to him and stayed obediently. Sarah only continued her business with peace of mind after seeing this scene. The white maple in the corner poured out all the broken fruits in one go, then removed the flesh one by one and set it aside, leaving only the core. Bai Fong came to the vegetable market this time because of these fruit pits, and he didn't expect to get them so smoothly. In the absence of access to fruit trees, in order to obtain more experimental samples, Bai Fong came up with the idea of using seeds to cultivate fruit trees. Although it may take some time, this is not a big deal for Bai Fong. After peeling out each fruit core from the flesh, Bai Fong will use his golden finger to check it. 
He will keep the ones containing special energy because they should be easier to sprout, while those that are empty inside will be discarded by him. Of course, not all tree fruits contain seeds, and some fruits have nothing but flesh. Damaged fruits emit a strong and pungent odor, which by foam endured for a long time before peeling off a basket of fruits. In the end, he obtained about ten seeds of different sizes. Ha finally finished peeling. By foam let out a long sigh of relief, I'm really suffocating. Put the seeds into a pre-prepared bag and collect them. By foam puts the remaining fruit flesh back into the box, ties them with the bag already in the box, and plans to take them away and throw them away when leaving. Child, it's you. At this moment, by foam suddenly heard a voice and looked up to see a long-haired big sister wearing a green dress looking at him in surprise. Do you remember me? The police station, Miss Junch's friend, Maggie. Of course, by foam remembers her. If it weren't for the help of this big sister, Hudi, he wouldn't have known how much effort it would take to explain his own affairs clearly. Seeing by foam looking at her in surprise, Maggie suddenly said, Oh. By the way, you don't understand what I'm saying. Upon hearing this, by foam quickly explained, Now. It's okay. Maggie had some understanding of Bai Feng's situation and said in surprise, that's really great. I didn't expect you to be so smart. You're called Bai Feng, right? What are you doing here? At this moment, Maggie suddenly noticed the rotten fruit in the frame under Bai Feng's feet. She also remembered that Bai Feng had just entered the orphanage and thought he wanted to eat the fruit, so she handed him the fruit she had just bought. This is for you. By phone quickly refused, I don't want it. It's okay, sister can buy it again. I'll give it to you as a gift for us to see you again. Maggie insisted on giving it to by phone. Should I also give you a gift? I am poor and have nothing. I don't want it, by phone insisted. Maggie thought that by phone didn't want her because of her strong self-esteem, so she had to give up. In fact, by phone doesn't have any self-esteem. He just thinks it's unnecessary. He's not a real child and even greedily eats a few bites of fruit. Has he not eaten enough fruit on the island yet? After eating for several years, he is almost addicted to fruit PTSD. Okay, I'll go see you when I have time. Maggie and by phone chatted for a while before leaving. Dean Mary quickly finished buying groceries and returned. After thanking Sarah, she took by phone back to the Qingya orphanage. Seeking collection, investment, and recommendation. End of this chapter. Chapter 7. Seedling Raising and New Workers. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 7 Seedling Raising and New Workers After returning to the orphanage, by phone saw Kai Kaizi holding Li Mo in a daze in the yard. On her left sat Yi Hui, and on her right sat Xiao Yu. The three of them had the same expression, except for Li Mo's watery eyes, which were spinning steadily. Brother Bai Feng, you're back. Seeing Bai Feng enter the yard, Xiao Yu smiled and quickly stood up, running to Bai Feng's side. Bai Feng took out the two fruits that Aunt Sarah had given him and handed them to him. Here, you and Brother Yi Hui each have one. Xiao Yu happily took the fruit and said, Thank you, brother by phone. After that, he ran to Ihue's side and handed him one of the fruits. Ihue took the fruit. Shyly, he smiled at by phone and whispered, Thank you. Kai Kaizi said helplessly, Brother by phone, you can eat it yourself. What are you doing for them? By phone said nonchalantly, It's okay, I don't like eating fruits. However, Kai Kaizi didn't believe it. She felt that Bai Feng must have been reluctant to eat it, so she brought it back to Ihue and Xiaoyu. There are only two, so I won't have your share this time. I'll bring them to you again when I have the chance, Bai Feng said helplessly, seeing Tsai Tsai's disbelief on her face. I don't want it, Kai Kaizi said stubbornly. Brother Bai Feng, keep it for yourself to eat. Next to him, Xiaoyu wiped the fruit and took a bite, then said with an exaggerated expression, Wow! It's really delicious. 
It's the best fruit I've ever tasted. Ha ha ha. Everyone laughed heartily at his funny appearance, even Rima chuckled along. After dismissing several children, Bifon returned to his room to handle the seeds. He did not immediately plant the seeds, but instead chose to comb through the energy inside the seeds with his golden finger. Although seeds have not yet sprouted, as long as they still have vitality, there is also a tree-like diagram for storing energy inside. However, the tree-like diagram of seeds is smaller than that of trees, and the energy stored inside is also thinner. What by phone needs to do is to ensure that the tree charts allow the stored energy to flow smoothly. The tree diagram of the fruit tree and the energy circuit of Pokemon are to some extent similar to the martial arts meridians of warriors in Bai Feng's impression of martial arts novels. Not all martial arts meridians are unobstructed, and they may be blocked. At this point, warriors need to take the initiative to unblock them. For example, after a warrior suddenly opened up the Ren Du 2 meridians, his cultivation speed suddenly increased, and he soon became a peerless master. Bai Feng believes that fruit trees and Pokemon are the same, but they do not have the ability to independently clear the tree diagram and energy circuits, so Bai Feng needs to use his golden fingers to help them. What Bai Feng needs to do now is to help the seeds clear the blocked parts in the tree diagram. He doesn't know if this can improve the germination and survival rates of seeds, but this is just an experiment. Just give it a try and you'll know. Because the tree diagram inside the seed is even more miniature, white maple requires extremely careful operation and consumes more energy than usual. By the time all the seeds were cleared, he was already sweating profusely. After finishing these, by foam still hasn't planted the seeds. He found a jar, put the seeds inside, and then poured water into it to completely soak the seeds. He soaked the seeds for several days until their shells softened before planting them one by one. During this period, Bai Feng followed Dean Meili to the vegetable market several times, each time asking Aunt Sarah for some bad fruits, and then peeling out the seeds inside to take home. During this period, Bai Feng has devoted most of his energy to the cultivation of seeds. The training of Bai Yi relies solely on the help of rocket sparrows and little arrow sparrows. Only when he helps them clear their energy circuits will Bai Feng visit their usual training place. Rocket sparrows and small arrow sparrows are very responsible working birds. As long as Bai Yi shows any signs of laziness, they will complain when Bai Feng goes to see them, causing Bai Yi to feel extremely sad. Because after that, Bai Feng would preach to Bai Yi non-stop for an hour until his old mother felt ashamed. My son has been working hard for this family at a young age, and as a mother, you are always lazy. Don't you feel ashamed? After half a month, the seeds planted by the white maple sprouted intermittently, with a survival rate of up to 90%, and each young tree grew very strong. In addition, the small tree he first planted has also fully survived, not only sprouting new branches and buds, but also growing a large section. It has been proven that his golden fingers can really work on fruit trees. More precisely, it should be able to work on all magical plants with special energy circuits. Over the past half month, a total of 30.6 small saplings of white maple have been planted and survived. Looking at the neatly arranged green plants in front of him, he felt a burning desire and a sense of achievement. With this golden finger in his hand, if you were to engage in the planting industry in the future, wouldn't he be able to easily become a fruit tycoon? You should know that in the world of Pokemon, there is a high demand for tree fruits. Countless trainers need to use tree fruits to make Pokemon food, such as energy blocks, Pokemon Poke Fleur, and so on. In short, the market in this area is very broad and the career prospects are very promising. Asterisk, fantasizing about the future with piles of money entering his pocket, by phone couldn't help but laugh out loud. Jie 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 but soon he woke up again. Fantasy is fantasy, and if he wanted to achieve it, it would be extremely difficult. And if the golden finger can only help the fruit survive and promote the growth of the fruit tree, it is completely not enough and cannot form a competitive advantage. If you want to sell tree fruits well, 
focus on quality rather than quantity, otherwise the fruits you plant will have to be sent to the market like Aunt Sarah. Only high dot quality tree fruits can enter the eyes of trainers, especially advanced trainers. What by phone needs to verify now is whether his golden fingers can improve the quality of fruit trees. If so, he really has the potential to become a fruit tycoon and reach the pinnacle of his life. It just takes time and can only be verified when the fruit tree seedlings grow and bear fruit. The land behind the Qingya orphanage is not large, and the fruit seedlings are still small. It is not a problem to temporarily plant them here. When the fruit trees grow up, if they are still so close to each other, it will greatly affect the fruiting of the fruit trees. In short, Bai Feng is currently facing many problems. Just as Bai Feng was silently planning his future in his heart, Kai Kaizi walked over with Yang Tai, Yi Hui, and Xiao Yu, each holding a small shovel. Brother Bai Feng, we're here to loosen the soil and weed your little tree, Xiao Yu said bouncing up to Bai Feng's side. Bai Feng rubbed his head and said, Okay, today too. Please. Thank you. Since learning that Bai Feng is planting fruit trees and vegetables, they have often come to help. They can do things such as loosening the soil, weeding, catching insects, and watering, which has really helped Bai Feng a lot. Although Bai Feng has the soul of an adult, his body is only a child, and taking care of more than 30 fruit trees alone is beyond his ability. Although Kai Kaizi is not very young, they are very agile in their work, even Xiao Yu and Ihue, who are only 4 or 5 years old, are doing it very well. And they never make their own decisions. They do whatever Bai Feng asks them to do, and they never damage any saplings from beginning to end. Xiao Yu looked at Bai Feng with a look of admiration and said, Brother Bai Feng is so amazing. He can grow so many fruit trees. Can we eat as many fruits as we want in the future? Bai Feng looked at Xiao Yu's drooling expression and laughed heartily, That's right, it's fruit. The first one. Xiao Yu eats it. Xiao Yu couldn't help but flatter and say, I knew Bai Feng was the best. You just know how to eat. Yang Tai patted Xiao Yu's buttocks on the side, causing Xiao Yu to keep making funny faces at him. After playing for a while, everyone started to get busy and lively. When the sun was about to set, Bai Feng and the children greeted each other and went to the small forest on the other side of the mountain slope. When he arrived there, Bai Yi was fighting fiercely with Rocket Sparrow and Little Arrow Sparrow. Now facing the simultaneous siege of about ten rocket sparrows and small arrow sparrows, Bai Yi no longer feels the same embarrassment as before. With ease in attacking and defending, he can occasionally shoot down one rocket sparrow or small arrow sparrow. It has to be said that high dot intensity training is very useful. It's really not easy for Bai Yi, such a soft bone, to be trained into a heroic female warrior. Seeing Bai Feng approaching, Rocket Sparrow and Little Arrow Sparrow knew that today's training was over, consciously stopped attacking, and then orderly landed next to Bai Feng, queuing up for major health care. Over the past half month, five small Arrow Sparrows have evolved into Rocket Sparrows one after another, which has made Bai Feng more certain that his golden fingers have a promoting effect on the evolution of Pokemon. In Bai Feng's conjecture, the essence of the evolution of Pokemon is the leap of races, and one more thing to understand is the evolution of internal energy circuits. What if it is already the final form of Pokemon? For example, Bai Yi, if Bai Feng continues to use his golden fingers to compress and purify his original energy, and unblock his energy circuit, will his energy circuit continue to evolve? If so, what will it ultimately become? It's hard to imagine due to Bai Feng's frequent use of golden fingers, his golden fingers have been trained to become stronger and stronger. Now, he can complete the major health care for rocket sparrows and small arrow sparrows in a very short time. On the way home, Bai Feng accidentally saw a small mound bulging up on the ground not far away. He quickly whispered a glance at Bai Yi. The old mother understood and pinned all her spiritual strength on the small mound. With a scream, a digging rabbit was pulled out of the mound by Bai Yi. It's really you. 
Bai Fong said with a gloating expression when he saw the digging rabbit, Ah! Uh, I caught you again, right? He had already heard from rocket sparrows before that there were not many Pokemon nearby, and only a few could be encountered. Therefore, as soon as he saw the small mound, he guessed whether he had encountered the digging rabbit that had deceived him and Bai Yi again. I didn't expect it to be really. Hobie, the digging rabbit looked pitifully at Bai Fong, trying to make him let it go again. Pretend to be pitiful with me. No way. Bai Fong didn't eat this trick. He looked around and found a cluster of vines not far away. He walked over and pulled it off, then tied it to the neck of the digging rabbit. Do you dare to pit me? If it weren't for Bai Ye's strength causing digging rabbit to be afraid, the mother and son would have been buried alive last time. Oh oh, don't do it. The digging and digging rabbit still pretended to be pitiful, trying to persuade Bai Fong to let it go. Bai Fong did indeed release it. He placed the digging rabbit on the ground, and as soon as it took two steps, it was pulled back by the vine tied around its neck. He he I pretended. Bai Fong said to it with a contemptuous expression, I advise you not to try to escape, otherwise if I catch you again. Humph. Bai Yi cooperated very well and pressed her own momentum onto the digging rabbit, and the mother and son had a great understanding. The digging rabbit was frightened and immediately lowered its head. All right, we're going home. After finishing speaking, he and Bai Yi continued to walk home, and the digging rabbit had to follow behind the mother and son obediently. After returning home, the children were very surprised to see the digging rabbit and didn't understand how Bai Fong went out and even brought a rabbit back. Bai Fong said to everyone, in the future, we don't have to do anything about loosening the soil for fruit trees. Digging rabbits will do a good job, right? Digging rabbits. Seeing the threatening look in Bai Fang's eyes, the digging rabbit was startled and quickly nodded. From then on, the digging rabbit became the second worker under Bai Fang's command, except for the rocket sparrow and others, and they were not paid. Three months have passed in the blink of an eye, and Bai Fong is still busy training white leaves and cultivating fruit trees on both sides. Bai Ye's strength steadily and rapidly increased, but without the assistance of energy blocks, Bai Fong still felt a bit dissatisfied. The progress on this side of the fruit tree is smoother, and most of the young trees have grown to be about the same height as the white maple. From a distance, they look lush green and full of vitality. On this day, Bai Fong led the digging rabbit back and forth between the saplings, as if searching for something. Because yesterday he accidentally discovered serrated circular holes on the leaves of several saplings, which looked like traces of being bitten by insects. Hobi Hobi, at this moment, the digging rabbit seemed to have found something and pointed in one direction, shouting loudly. Bai Fong walked over and saw two insects hiding in the middle of the leaves on a tree, and they were happily eating. Good guy, it turns out it's you too. Bai Fong walked over and grabbed one from the leaf, lifting up two small insects. Let go, let go, help. Let go of me, let go of me. The two butterfly insects caught by Bai Fong were only the size of his palm. You two have so much courage, how dare you run on me and eat my fruit tree seedlings. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Bai Daoguan and Proposal for Going to School You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Bai Daoguan and Proposal for Going to School There are so many trees and grass outside that you don't eat them. Instead, you run to me and steal them. You're so brave. Bai Fong said angrily. Porn. Porn, porn. Two butterfly insects kept wriggling their bodies, trying to break free from Bai Fang's hands, and even wanting to spit silk towards him. Unfortunately, what Bai Fong pinched happened to be their back necks, and the thread they spit out could only reach the ground in front of them, not even Bai Fong. They have little strength, so they can only be at the mercy of Bai Fong. Really, it will cause trouble. Bai Fong walked out of his small orchard carrying the butterfly insects and threw them away on the distant grass. Don't come back, otherwise don't blame me for being impolite. 
After returning to the small orchard, Bifone took out a pair of scissors and began trimming the excess branches of the saplings. Hello, children. At this moment, a sound came from outside the orchard. Bifone looked back and saw a little old man riding a goat outside at some point. Who is this? Bifone walked over and asked in confusion, Hello Grandpa, what's up? After this period of unremitting efforts, Bifone can now communicate with others very smoothly, no longer stuttering like before, he still has some language talent in him. The old man pointed to the saplings in the small orchard and asked in surprise, Are these all planted by you? Yeah, what's the problem? Bifone was wary. He shouldn't be a bad person, right? Looking at me with a kind eyebrow and a kind purpose. The old man laughed heartily and said, No problem, no problem. It's just that he thinks you're really good at taking care of these fruit trees, kid. He he, by phone touched the back of his head, pretending to be silly. It's all something I planted and played with, it's not much of a deal. The old man waved his hand and said, Don't be humble, old man. I still have a bit of insight. Do you really like planting fruit trees, kid? By phone usually tries to imitate children in his behavior and behavior, just to ensure that he doesn't appear too abrupt. Therefore, he crossed his waist and said proudly, Of course, I will become a man of tree and fruit tycoons in the future. Ha 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 all right, all right. The old man was once again amused and laughed heartily. Not bad, young but ambitious. Children, how old are you? What's your name? My name is Bai Fong, I am eight years old this year, Bai Fong said solemnly, matching his handsome and lovely face without any awkwardness. Just eight years old. So young. The old man was clearly taken aback and then exclaimed in admiration, It's amazing, it's amazing. Grandpa, I'll tell you who I am, but you haven't told me who you are yet, Bai Fong asked in confusion. The old man replied, You can call me Grandpa Fu. All right, I'm leaving now. If you have time, you can go to the Bai Taoist Hall and find me to play. Bai Yi Dao Guan. Bai Fong exclaimed in his heart, Is this the master of the Bai Taoist Hall, Fu Yi? But it seems much younger than what I remember. In his impression, Fai should be in his sixties or seventies, and this one looks at most fifty years old. After leaving a message, the old man rode a goat and left. Bai Fong quickly ran out of the orchard and ran all the way to Dean Mary's side. Dean Mary, do you know the Bai Taoist Hall? Bai Fong asked urgently. Dean Mary was washing clothes for Rima when she stopped her hand and replied, I know, the Bai Taoist Hall is not far from us. Well, it's over there. She pointed in one direction, but only one mountain could be seen in that direction, and nothing else could be seen. Do you know who the owner of Bai Daoguan is? Bai Fong asked again. Of course it's Mr. Fouad. He's a very famous person in Bai City, and sometimes he passes by us for walks. Dean Mary spoke of Mr. Fouad with a tone of admiration. I met a person at the orchard today, and he said he wanted me to go to the Bai Taoist Hall to play with him. He also said his name is Grandpa Fu. That's Mr. Fuad. Dean Mary exclaimed in surprise, he likes children to call him Fai or Fu Grandpa. Dean Mary was surprised that Bai Fong was able to win Mr. Fuad's favor. However, when she thought about the small saplings that were well taken care of by Bai Fong behind the house, Dean Mary immediately understood that Mr. Fuad was also a very fond planter. Mr. Fuad was an idol of many young girls in Bai City when he was young. Originally, Fai's full name is Fuad. Bai Fong suddenly realized. Since Mr. Fuad has said that, then you can go. He is a very good person and definitely can teach you a lot, Dean Mary said with emotion. The children in the orphanage have lost to the vast majority in terms of birth, and if they want to stand out, they must put in more effort. If Bai Fong can be favored and nurtured by Mr. Fuad, his future path will definitely be much easier. Dean Mary sincerely felt happy for Bai Fong. 
When Bai Feng started planting trees behind the house, she only regarded him as a child's nature and playful. I didn't expect that Bai Feng is really good at planting. Even if she were an adult to take care of those trees, she might not be able to do better than this child. You should be more obedient when you go to the Bai Taoist Hall, listen to Mr. Fuad more, learn more knowledge from Mr. Fuad, and not be too playful. Dean Mary earnestly instructed by phone. Got it, thank you Dean Mary. After Dean Mary finished speaking, by phone ran away excitedly. Fai and Bai Daoguan. This may be his own opportunity, but he is seriously lacking knowledge about this world and trainers, whether it is about planting or Pokemon. Learning these knowledge requires pathways, but they are clearly not available in orphanages. Bai Daoguan is different. Having made up his mind, Bai Feng decided to establish a good relationship with Fu Yi. The next day, Bai Feng was escorted to the Bai Taoist Hall by Dean Mary in the most full mental state. As expected, as Dean Mary said, the Bai Yi Dao Hall is very close to the Qingya Orphanage, with only a mountain peak in the middle. To reach there, one must pass through a cave, so Bai Feng never noticed this place. The Qingya Orphanage is located on a gentle and open hillside, while the Bai Road Museum is hidden between steep mountain peaks. Fortunately, the modern facilities here are very complete. Bai Feng and his team don't need to climb the mountain walls themselves, they just need to take the elevator. When Bai Feng stood at the entrance of the Bai Yi Dao Hall, his first impression was shock, because the Bai Yi Dao Hall was actually built on an incredibly tall giant tree. There are wooden stairs built on the trunk of the giant tree, and shadows of houses can be faintly seen in the canopy. Dean Mary told the apprentice of the Taoist school about the agreement between Bai Feng and Fu Yi, and the apprentice took Bai Feng to see Fu Yi, while she returned to the orphanage alone. Hello, my name is Asheng and I am an apprentice of the Taoist school here. Are you Bai Feng? You also come here to be an apprentice. A Sheng led Bai Feng and chatted with him. Bai Feng shook his head and said, No, Grandpa Fu just let me play. Well. A Sheng was a bit surprised, thinking that Bai Feng was the new apprentice favored by Fu Yi. Since Fu Yi invited you to play, I'm sure he really likes you. Bai Feng smiled and didn't speak anymore. Soon, he was taken to the center of the trunk of a big tree, where a garden was built. As soon as he entered, he was fascinated by the colorful scenery inside. The garden is not only filled with beautiful flowers of all kinds, but there are also about ten shuttlecock grass and shuttlecock flowers dancing in the air. On the ground, there are trumpet buds dancing with their hands and feet, and flowers jumping and jumping in their mouths, making it very lively. It is truly a grass-style Taoist temple. Upon hearing the sound, Fu Yi stood up from the flower bushes, holding a pair of scissors in his hand. He greeted Bai Feng with a smile and said, Children, you're here. After A Xing delivered Bai Feng, he left. Bai Feng walked up to Grandpa Fu and said, Grandpa Fu, your place is so beautiful. Can I ask you how to plant flowers? Fu Yi looked at him with a smile on his face and said, Aren't you determined to become a fruit tycoon? Are you really just learning how to grow flowers? Bai Feng scratched his head foolishly and said with a smile, If you're willing to teach me something else, I'm definitely willing to learn as well. Cunning kid, Fai chuckled and patted his head before saying, I'm so old, I don't have the energy to teach you. Upon hearing these words, Bai Feng's emotions visibly lowered. Don't worry, come with me, continued Fai. Upon hearing this, Bai Feng followed Fai inexplicably. Under the guidance of Fu Yi, Bai Feng arrived at his study and looked at the room full of books. Bai Feng widened his eyes in surprise. This is probably comparable to a large library. How's it going? Fai said slightly smugly, here are all books about planting and Pokemon. There is no place in Bai City with a richer collection of books than mine. Seeing Bai Feng's slightly widened mouth, Fu Yi was very satisfied. In the future, you can come here to read books. Bai Feng, who was originally disappointed because Fu Yi said he would not teach him, 
was of course extremely excited when he heard these words, but soon he became entangled again and said awkwardly. That. That. I can't read. Fu Yi. Aren't you eight years old? You haven't attended school, Fai asked in shock. So Bai Feng told Fu Yi about his recent return to the human world. It was already not easy for him to learn to speak a new language within a few months. It would be really difficult for him to ask for the ability to recognize characters. Speaking of this, Bai Feng couldn't help but feel a bit overwhelmed. In his past life, he was barely a top student in elementary school and even obtained a master's degree. Unexpectedly, he became illiterate while traveling. My cold window has been studying hard for twenty years. Okay, I understand. You come with me. After finishing speaking, Fuyi took Bai Feng to a computer in the study. Fai's study is very modern, with not only paper versions of books, but also electronic versions. Of course, the illiterate electronic version of Bai Feng's book is also unreadable. But it's okay, there are always more ways than difficulties. If you don't recognize the characters, can you watch the video? There are also various teaching videos stored on the computer. You can watch videos to learn first, and when you recognize characters in the future, you can also read the books here casually. Fai really likes Bai Feng, a young boy who appears innocent on the surface but also reveals a bit of cunning inside, so he wants to give him a chance to grow. As for whether Bai Feng can seize this opportunity, it depends on himself. Thank you, Grandpa Fu. I will definitely repay you in the future, Bai Feng said from the bottom of his heart. The opportunity given by Grandpa Fu is really important to him. Okay, then you can't make me wait too long. I'll wait for you to repay me, Fai joked with a smile. You can take a look for yourself. If you need anything, you can go to the garden and find me. Remember the way. Well, I got it, I remember. After Fu Yi left, Bai Feng began to eagerly browse through the knowledge on the computer. Fai's collection is indeed rich, and Bai Feng forgot the time when he looked at it, until Fai came to call him. Little one, should you go home now? Upon hearing this, Bai Feng quickly looked at the time and found that it was already noon. Your dean is already waiting for you outside, Fai said again. Bai Feng said awkwardly, I'm sorry, Grandpa Fu, I forgot the time. Fu Yi waved his hand and said, It's nothing. Learning well is a good thing, but you also need to pay attention to balancing work and rest, so that the efficiency of learning can be higher. I'll pay attention next time, Bai Feng nodded obediently. All right, I'll take you to the door. When Bai Feng arrived at the entrance of the Bai Taoist Hall, Dean Mary was indeed waiting there. He spoke apologetically to the dean. Dean Mary, you don't need to come pick me up in the future. I'll just go back by myself. Dean Mary disagreed and said, how can we do that? I don't trust you alone. What if we encounter danger? At this moment, Fai said, in the future, I'll have the tropical dragon take this kid back. Dean Mary, you don't have to worry. After finishing speaking, Fai blew a soft whistle and saw a sturdy tropical dragon fly out of the canopy of the giant tree, slowly landing beside White Maple and Dean Mary. Today, you can ride the tropical dragon back. After thanking Fai, the two climbed onto the back of the tropical dragon and were carried by it to fly, which was a novel experience for both of them. Tropical dragons have a gentle temperament and fly very smoothly, giving people a sense of security. On the way back, Dean Mary asked, How did you get along with Mr. Fawad today? Did you gain anything? Bai Feng excitedly said, Grandpa Fu is very kind and kind to me. He even said that I can read any book in his study. That's good, that's good. This opportunity is rare, you must cherish it. Dean Mary was very happy for Bai Feng after listening. At this moment, Bai Feng suddenly said to Dean Mary, Dean Mary, thank you. Thank you for taking care of me, for allowing me to plant fruit trees, and for being willing to support me in studying at Fai's place upon hearing Bai Feng's sudden words, Dean Mary couldn't react and asked in confusion. 
What's wrong? Bai Feng shook his head and said, It's nothing, I just think you're really kind. He came out of the island and met all kind people along the way. He was grateful to these people from the bottom of his heart. You child, why are you saying this? Dean Mary felt that Bai Feng's serious tone was a bit funny, but suddenly felt a warmth in her heart. After returning home, the children gathered around and asked about Bai Feng's experience at the Bai Taoist Hall, and Bai Feng answered them one by one. During lunch, Dean Mary suddenly said to Bai Feng, Bai Feng, you can now communicate normally. Do you want to go to school with Dong Yu? Bai Feng was worried about literacy, and upon hearing Dean Mary's words, he immediately agreed. Okay. Dean Mary nodded and said, In that case, I'll take you to the school another day to inquire about the situation. Upon hearing these words, Yang Tai immediately exclaimed in displeasure, Hey! Brother Bai Feng is also going to school. Isn't there only a few of us left at home? Dean Mary immediately scolded him, You're getting old too, and you'll have to go then. Don't just fuss all day long. Oh. Yang Tai quickly lowered her head and grilled rice. After lunch, the digging rabbit suddenly found Bai Feng and said that the two insects from yesterday had come again. Bai Feng hurriedly rushed to the orchard and indeed found the two butterfly insects from yesterday on a sapling. They were nibbling on the tender leaves of the sapling, making Bai Feng furious. It's you again. He walked over angrily and reached out his hand to the two butterfly insects. As soon as two butterfly insects saw Bai Feng, they immediately wanted to run away, but their speed was too slow and Bai Feng pinched their necks again. I warned you not to come again, right? You still don't listen. Do you think I can't cure you? Bai Feng angrily walked out of the orchard and found two sturdy ropes when he returned home. He tied the two insects to one end and hung them on the eaves, letting them drift and sway in the wind. Porn 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 Porn, the sound of two insects crying and chirping attracted the children, who all ran down to watch. Brother by phone, is this a Pokemon? Ihue asked with curious eyes. Bai Feng nodded and said, That's right, they are called butterfly insects, and the colorful butterfly is their evolutionary origin. Although children have not seen many butterfly insects, they have seen the colorful butterfly that often flies back and forth in the grass many times, so they are not unfamiliar. It's quite cute, Kai Kaizi said. Brother Bai Feng, why do you want to hang them up? Bai Feng explained, they went to sneak into the garden to steal fruit seedlings. I had already let them go yesterday, but they dared to come today. Kai Kaizi said coldly and ruthlessly upon hearing this, that should be punished well, but hanging them is really too cheap. Epsilon the pink butterfly beetle, who was originally waiting for the vegetable to plead for mercy, immediately became tearful. Cluck Cluck, Shaolima was amused by the interesting appearance of the butterfly beetle. Bai Feng instructed the children, help me keep an eye on the two of them, don't let them run away, don't let them suffer, they don't even know what fear is. Yang Taiha and Xiaoyu spoke in unison, we promise to complete the task. After dealing with the butterfly beetle, Bai Feng said to the digging rabbit, you performed well today, I need to reward you well. The digging rabbit's eyes lit up upon hearing this. Are you going to let me go? The digging rabbit, who has been working for Bai Feng, has long hoped that this Joe Pippi can set himself free. Let me give you a great health care. Upon hearing this, the digging rabbit was immediately disappointed, but upon reflection, it felt acceptable. It has long wanted to experience the great health benefits of a white leaf. Is it really that comfortable? No living organism can escape the law of true fragrance, and the same goes for digging rabbits. When Bai Feng helped dig rabbits for health care, its reaction was as follows. Asterisk is this. The big health care. It's so comfortable. In the afternoon, Bai Feng continued to learn knowledge from Fu Yi and was only brought back by the tropical dragon when the sun was about to set. As soon as he returned home, he saw two butterfly insects hanging under the eaves with an unattainable appearance. 
Kai Kaizi and his team did a good job and didn't let them run away. Bai Fong untied them from the rope, took them to the grassland outside, put them in the bushes, and warned them seriously again. Don't come again, there's a lot of grass to eat here. Don't go and harm my fruit tree. He said and went home. Before going to bed at night, Bai Fong tossed and turned, unable to sleep. So he simply got up from the bed, sat next to Bai Yi, and shared his joy with him. He talked to him about what he had learned from Fu Yi during the day, and how important the opportunity Fu Yi gave him was to him, planning for his and Bai Ye's future. Bai Fong talked for a long time, but in the end, he didn't even know when he fell asleep. Bai Yi gently picked up Bai Fong, walked to his bed, put him down, and covered him with a blanket. Looking at Bai Feng's innocent face, Bai Yi suddenly felt a little confused. This is the child I raised from childhood to adulthood. It turns out that he has become so reliable unconsciously listening to what Bai Fong said tonight, it seems that he suddenly understood that his son was confused when he first came to the human world, right? Worried, right? At the same time, it is full of longing. And he has always maintained the determination and effort to plan for their future. Nowadays, their living conditions are not considered prosperous, and their son has been working hard to change this. And while his son is working hard for this family, he is still complaining that his son always forces him to train. The simple growth environment has cultivated a pure personality in Bai Yi, who is rarely willing to use his brain in anything he does. After his son became smarter, he simply threw away his brain and listened to everything his son did. Now that he understands his son's plans for the future, his heart is deeply touched. Perhaps it should also take the initiative to support its son. The next morning, Bai Yi left early and said he was going to train with rocket sparrows. Bai Fong, who didn't know that Bai Yi was already trying to change his mind, was confused by his mother's behavior. Has the sun risen to the west today? How did you suddenly become so positive? Although he was puzzled in his heart, Bai Fong did not delve deeper. He still had an important task to do today. To consult about school matters. After having breakfast early, Bai Fong, Dean Meili, and Dong Yu walked out together. End of this chapter. Chapter 9 Fruit Trees Grow Into Harvest in Sight You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 Fruit trees grow into harvest in Sight Dong Yu School is very close to the vegetable market and is also located in the center of the residential area in the East District. West District The part of Bai City near the sea, East District. The part of Bai City near the mountain. The full name is Bai City 5th Junior School. The scale of the 5th grade is not large with less than 100 students because there are relatively few residents living in the Eastern District, and the number of children themselves is limited. Moreover, there are two other primary schools in the Eastern District. The 8th and 9th grade schools, which have diverted many students. Dean Mary took by phone directly to meet with the principal of the 5th grade. Later, by phone found out that the principal of the 5th grade was actually Dean Mary's ex-husband. In the fifth grade, the principal's name is He Mao Chun, who is the same age as Dean Mary, but looks younger than Dean Mary. He has a straight and slender figure, and although there are some wrinkles on his face, it does not affect his temperament, but rather makes him look more refined and easy. Going. He Mao Chun and Dean Meili were introduced to each other by their families, and they got married shortly after getting to know each other. After marriage, the two have never had children and their relationship is also very ordinary. Their union is not so much about love, but rather the will of the parents of the two families. Later on, Dean Mary's parents passed away one after another, and she took over the position of Dean of the Qingya Orphanage from her mother. Gradually, because she needed to take care of the children in the orphanage, she couldn't go home, so her relationship with her husband gradually became nominal. In the sixth year since Dean Mary took over the Blue Bird Orphanage, the two peacefully divorced in order to not delay each other anymore. After the divorce, Dean Mary devoted all her energy to the orphanage. 
In order to facilitate taking care of the children, she moved directly into the orphanage and never had the thought of getting married again. And he Mao Chun remarried in the fourth year after their divorce. Their lives are usually like two parallel lines, and they rarely encounter each other. When Mei Li took Bai Feng to see Principal He Mao Chun this time, Bai Feng felt that they were very distant from each other and did not look like they had been married before. The enrollment of Bai Feng went very smoothly, and after learning about his situation, He Mao Chun arranged for him to be in the first grade of the fifth grade. Although Bai Feng is slightly older than other children who have just started school, who makes his situation special. From then on, Bai Feng lived a daily life of going to and from school with Dong Yu. The courses taught in junior schools are very simple, just the Natural Science Foundation and Humanities and Sociology Foundation of Pake Mon World. Bai Feng doesn't have any pressure to learn. Because Bai Feng has to go to school, the time he can go to Fai's place to study is greatly reduced. So, as he gradually became literate, he asked Mr. Fu if he could lend out the books in his study. After obtaining the consent of Mr. Fu, he began to take the book to school to read, and whenever he had time, he would hold on to the book and read it. Because the courses in primary schools are not difficult, Bai Feng has no pressure to study, so sometimes he even reads other books during class, which often causes dissatisfaction among teachers. But his grades were also very good, ranking among the top in every exam, so the teachers gradually stopped caring about him as long as he didn't disturb other students. In school, Bai Feng gives his classmates the impression of having good grades, but being unsociable, solitary, and bookish. However, he didn't care about what others said about him, and continued to go his own way every day, after all, he really couldn't play house with a group of real children. Isn't it enjoyable to read two more pages of books with that time? Because of this, there were also children who tried to bully him, but in turn, they were severely punished by Bai Feng, and from then on, Bai Feng's campus life became calm and peaceful. Time flies, and in the blink of an eye, more than a year has passed. Finally, Bai Feng is ten years old. Although he has not yet graduated from junior school due to his late enrollment, at the age of ten in Pokemon world, he has the ability to act independently such as being able to go out and find a job, and being hired by others is no longer illegal. Although ten years old is not the age of adulthood, it is a special age. Of course, Bai Feng has no intention of working for others. His goal is to become a fruit tree tycoon, and he definitely wants to start his own business. For this, he has never dared to slack off at all for over a year, he has really put in his life to study. At noon that day, after school, Bai Feng ran out of the school in a flash, ignoring the gaze of others, and disappeared at the entrance of Wu Chu in the blink of an eye. He ran all the way and arrived at the necessary path for Dong Yu to go home, waiting. Dong Yu, who was about to go home, saw Bai Feng and asked in confusion, Bai Feng, why are you here? Didn't you come with Yang Tai and Kai Kai Zi today? After Yang Taiha and Kai Kaizi reached their age, they were also sent by Dean Mary to study in the fifth grade, one grade lower than by Fong. The three of them usually go to school together after school. And now Dong Yu is no longer a student in the fifth grade. Not long after by Fong enrolled, he graduated from the fifth grade at the age of ten and then enrolled in the fourth intermediate school. All students in primary schools have the same courses to study but in intermediate schools, there are different types of courses, including general courses, Pokemon courses, or Pokemon courses. Students will be taught different knowledge based on their chosen subjects. Note. Pokemon were called Warcraft by humans in ancient times. Later, with the birth of the trainer profession, the relationship between Warcraft and humans eased, and the term Warcraft gradually disappeared, giving rise to the name Pokemon. Later on, modern Pake Ball technology became increasingly advanced, and the relationship between humans and elves became closer. As a result, the name Pake Mon gradually began to replace the name elves. To this day, the new generation of trainers have completely used the term Pake Mon to refer to elves, but the older generation still uses elves to refer to their partners. 
So Pokemon is also known as Pokemon, Pokemon food is called Pokemon food, and items containing Pokemon are called Pokemon balls Dongyu has been studying in the general subject of number 4 middle school for over a year. Most schools in the eastern district of Bai City are Alliance Public Schools, usually offering both regular and Pokemon courses. However, it is said that some private schools in the western district only have Pokemon courses, which are used to specifically cultivate trainers. Those who can enter such schools are children from wealthy families. I have something I want Dongyu brother to help with, Bai Foam replied. What's making you so anxious? You can't even wait to go home, don't you? asked curiously. Don't you, do you know a breeder at school? The kind with more money, Bai Fong asked. Don't you was taken aback by the words and then suddenly realized, are you trying to find buyers for your tree fruits? That's right. Bai Fong nodded. After more than a year of careful cultivation, the more than 30 white maple fruit trees have already begun to bear fruit, and the fruits will soon mature. Over the past year, Bai Fong has not been taking care of fruit trees recklessly, but rather the result of scientific cultivation under the guidance of Fu Yi and after researching a considerable amount of planting knowledge. After studying, Bai Fong already knew that tree fruits have energy grading, with seven levels of quality from high to low. S, A, B, C, D, E, and F. For example, Aunt Sarah sells the lowest level at the vegetable market, with energy grading generally being E or F. The tree fruit that can be used as a material for making energy blocks and other elf food must have the lowest energy rating of D. The price of the energy grader for tree fruits is not high. Phi had already given by phone one, so by phone has tested the trees he planted, most of which are C. Grade, and even a small number are B. Grade. When Bai Fong first saw the test results, his heart stopped beating in surprise. The seeds he used to cultivate these fruit trees were only picked up from the vegetable market, and theoretically, the fruits he produced were at most E. grade or F. grade. However, it was actually detected to be of grade C and B, which means that Bai Fong did not guess wrong. His golden fingers indeed have the ability to improve the quality of tree fruits, and they are very strong. You should know that this is the first time a fruit tree is bearing fruit. If we continue to cultivate it, it won't be a dream to produce a dot grade or s dot grade fruits in a few years. How much money can't be earned from having fruits of this level? At that time, Bai Fong really breathed a sigh of relief, because without this ability, his plan as a fruit tycoon would only be in vain. Now he doesn't have to worry anymore. Later, Bai Fong also learned about the reason why the two butterfly insects used to run to their own orchard by consulting materials. It turns out that fruit trees attract Pokemon species such as green caterpillars, spiny-tailed insects, and butterfly insects when they are full of energy, because eating the branches and leaves of these fruit trees can accelerate their evolution. Only fruit trees with abundant energy can produce high-dot-quality fruits. What he needs to do now is sell this batch of tree fruits and earn his first bucket of gold. The quality of tree fruits has reached C and B levels, so it is not possible for white maple to sell them to the market casually. The most suitable way to handle it is to sell them to breeders. But by phone has no connections and cannot come into contact with advanced breeders. Even if he does, they may not necessarily buy him. Advanced breeders must have their own channels for purchasing trees and fruits. Moreover, as it is the first time hanging fruit, the number of fruits produced by these white maple trees is not very large. So he set his goal on those breeder students who have some small money and hope to get higher quality tree fruit materials, but the demand is not high. This is just right for by phone. C. Level and B. Level energy blocks are already quite rare on the market especially B. Level ones. Even if ordinary breeders have money, they may not necessarily be able to obtain them, so Bai Feng is confident in promoting his fruit. Upon hearing Bai Feng's answer, Dong Yu frowned and said, Bai Feng, there are quality requirements for the fruits that breeders purchase. The ones you plant. 
he knows that the seeds of white maple trees and fruits are only picked up from the vegetable market. Bai Feng confidently said, Don't worry, Brother Dongyu. I have been learning planting techniques with Grandpa Fu for over a year, and the quality of the trees and fruits is definitely not a problem. I have already tested them. He couldn't possibly reveal his golden finger, so he had to push everything onto Fu Yi. Dong Yu knew nothing about planting, so he had no doubt about Bai Feng's words. Moreover, Bai Feng had been putting in a lot of effort and effort on those trees and fruits for over a year, so he smiled and agreed. That's good. I'm not a student of Pokemon, so I don't know any breeders. But when I go to school in the afternoon, I can help you inquire. That's really great, Dong Yu brother. Thank you so much. Bai Feng said excitedly. Dong Yu shook his head and said, What's there to help you with? It's good. As the oldest child in the Qingya orphanage, Dong Yu has always felt that he has a responsibility to take care of his younger siblings in the orphanage. Therefore, his dream has always been to grow up quickly, go out to work quickly, and earn more money to alleviate the burden on Dean Mary. So Dong Yu felt very happy to be able to help by phone. Not long after the two returned home, Yang Tai and Kai Kaizi also returned together. Yang Taifei ran into the yard and exclaimed, Brother Bai Feng, why did you leave alone? It's fortunate that Kai Kaizi and I even went to your class to find you, causing us to come all the way for nothing. Ah, I'm sorry, Bai Feng chuckled. I'm in a hurry to ask Dong Yu for help. I didn't have time to wait for you. Yang asked curiously, What's up? Do you want me to help too? Bai Feng shook his head and said, you don't need your help. The matter may not be possible yet. I'll tell you when it's done. Okay. After dismissing Yang Tai, Bai Feng turned around and went to the orchard. Nowadays, the orchard is completely different from when it first started. More than 30 fruit trees have grown taller than white maple, with lush branches and leaves, promising growth, and a bountiful harvest in sight. These types of white maple fruit trees are very common, with nearly half being orange fruits, the other half being berries, and some being peaches. But the average variety of tree fruits also means that they are one of the most demanded tree fruits in the market. There will be more talents with high market demand, and more people will make them appear ordinary. However, one downside is that as the fruit trees slowly grow, this open space is no longer sufficient for them to continue growing. Fruit trees, you are next to me, I am next to you, competing for living space with each other. If this continues, sooner or later problems will arise. So Bai Feng really needs a piece of land now. As soon as Bai Feng entered the orchard, he saw the figure of Bai Yi among the trees. Compared to a year ago, Bai Yi now looks like she has undergone significant changes. Every move reveals a hint of fierce momentum, but when you look closely, it seems like it's just an illusion. It can only be said that Bai Yi has now reached a level of mastery over her own energy. Every day, it is surrounded by a large group of birds, and even if it is not proficient, it cannot do it. Since the digging rabbit was fired by Bai Feng, it has been Bai Yi who has been helping him manage the orchard for the past year. As for why the digging rabbit was fired, of course it was poor. The digging rabbit fell in love with big health care and later performed well, so by phone gave it a few more big health treatments. So one day, it suddenly evolved and became a burly digging rabbit with a big head and intestines, no longer the cute appearance it used to be. And this guy can be eaten by thieves. After only one day, by phone felt that he couldn't afford to keep it anymore. You should know that Rocket Sparrow and Little Arrow Sparrow have been employed for so long, and Bai Feng has never been responsible for their food, unlike Digging Rabbit. So Bai Feng dismissed it. When digging the ground, the rabbit was a bit reluctant to leave, but unfortunately, Bai Feng couldn't afford to raise a big stomach king. He had just been fed and fed. After the Digging Rabbit left, Bai Yi took the initiative to help Bai Feng manage the orchard and would also actively learn planting knowledge with him. To be honest, Bai Feng was initially frightened by Bai Ye's sudden transformation. 
Is this still my silly and sweet mother? Shouldn't someone have worn it through, right? It was already strange for Bai Yi to suddenly become diligent in training before. Just as Bai Feng raised this doubt in Bai Yi, he was beaten up. Dare to question your mother. You're missing out, right? Silly and sweet mom suddenly turned into an irritable mom. But at the same time, Bai Feng also felt relieved, his mother was still that old mother. Shanai Shanai, baby, you're back. Seeing Bai Feng come back from school, Bai Yi quickly ran to his side. Bai Feng saw Bai Yi holding a basket in his hand and asked in confusion, What are you doing? Bai Yi handed the basket in his hand to Bai Feng and explained that some of the fruits were already ripe, so he planned to pick some and give them back to the children to eat. The tree fruit is not yet in the harvest period, and if the first ripe fruit is not picked, it will only rot on the branches. Let me take one first. Bai Feng immediately reached out and took out a peach fruit from the basket. He casually wiped it with his hand and started eating it. Anyway, he didn't use pesticides here, so he couldn't kill anyone. Kacha Bai Feng took a bite and felt the juice overflowing, with a rich fruity aroma filling his mouth. The sweet taste stimulated his brain. This. This is also so delicious. Bai Feng couldn't help but exclaim, the taste was completely different from the tree fruit he had eaten before. Do my golden fingers have the ability to improve the taste of tree fruits? Bai Feng was startled. Bai Yi had already eaten it, so she knew the taste of peach fruit. She looked at Bai Feng with an expression of, how is it? Is it delicious as if the fruit was not grown by Bai Feng, but by him? Oh, oh Bai Yi. What is the difference between what my son planted and what I planted? The taste of tree fruits is diverse, including spicy, bitter, sour, astringent. Some Pokémon also have strange flavors, such as most fire-type Pokémon love spicy flavors, which humans find delicious, but Pokémon may not necessarily like. The three types of fruits planted with white maple are all in line with human taste, so the taste is mainly sweet and sour. After being improved by Golden Finger, the combination between these two flavors becomes more reasonable. What if we replace it with spicy, bitter, and astringent tree fruits? What will their taste become after being improved? Will Pokémon like it more? Bai Feng felt that these were all areas where he needed to research and experiment in the future. Let's take it back and give everyone a try. Bai Feng took the basket from Bai Ye's hand and ran eagerly home. Sure enough, the fruit was welcomed by everyone. It's so delicious. Xiao Yu exclaimed while nibbling on the fruit, Brother Bai Feng, you're so amazing. This is the best fruit I've ever tasted. Bai Feng. Is that so? I think I've heard that before somewhere. Xiao Yu is indeed a little flatterer. Even two-year-old Rima is enjoying herself with her small mouth bulging. The flesh taste of peach fruit is somewhat similar to that of white maple peaches in their past lives. After ripening, the flesh is very soft, so even Rima, who is only two years old, can easily eat it. Kai Kaizi cut the peaches and peaches into small pieces and fed them to Li Mo one by one. Eating delicious fruits, Dong Yu suddenly understood why Bai Yi was so confident that his tree fruit could be sold. If he had money, he would be willing to buy even if the fruit quality was slightly inferior based solely on the taste. Besides, the quality may not necessarily be poor. Dong Yu is very reliable in his work. As soon as he returned to school in the afternoon, he began to help Bai Feng inquire if any breeders needed to purchase tree fruits. He has a good friend in the general department, and that good friend has a little sister who is a breeder and also attends the fourth middle school with them. That sister is planning to participate in the upcoming Triple Crown Satellite Tournament in Bai City, where she needs to make a Pokémon pony, so she needs to use tree fruits. But good fruits are not easy to buy, so that sister has been worrying about this matter. So Dong Yu asked his friend to introduce him to the sister, but to his surprise, the sister agreed and soon arranged a meeting time with Dong Yu. 
When Dong Yu told Bai Feng the good news, Bai Feng was extremely happy. End of this chapter. Chapter 10 First Barrel of Gold You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 First Barrel of Gold Two days later, Dong Yu and Bai Feng met with their friends, friend Fa Xiao, and friend Fa Xiao's sister in a vacant space outside of 4th Middle School. This is what you call having good quality fruit. Bring two kids to fool me, said the little sister angrily to her younger brother and his friends. My younger brother immediately comforted his sister and said, I dare not, sister truth. Don't worry for now. We've all arrived, at least take a look. What if someone else's fruit can satisfy you? He and Dong Yu are both classmates and good friends, so of course, they have to speak for their good friends. Truth thinks so, everyone has come, and besides, it's her own younger brother who called her here. What can she do? Go back and give it a beating to relieve your anger. And there's also that kid Ishwan, they've known each other for over a decade at least, so they shouldn't deceive themselves. Maybe they really have good fruit. After doing a good job of psychological construction for herself, Truth looked at Dong Yu and Bai Fong with a cold face and said, Are you selling tree fruits? Upon hearing this, Bai Fong immediately stepped forward and sweetly said, Beautiful sister, it's us. I have brought the fruit samples and test results, please take a look first. If you're not satisfied, we'll talk about it again. In fact, Bai Fong is very confident in his own fruit. Originally, Truth was a bit angry, but seeing that Bai Fong was good dot looking and had a sweet mouth, the last bit of anger left in her heart was gone. Over the past year, Bai Feng's originally dark skin has whitened and he has grown taller. He is indeed a very handsome young man, which is difficult to dislike. My little brother can still speak, so let me take a look first. By the way, my name is Truth, what are your names? Sister is really beautiful and kind.hearted, Bai Feng said with a smile. My name is Bai Feng, and next to me is my brother Dong Yu. My brother and Ishuan are good friends. Come on, sister, take a look. Speaking, Bai Feng took a step forward and sent two baskets containing fruit, which contained tree fruits with energy ratings of B and C. Truth picked one out of them and nodded slightly, saying, It looks pretty good, the color and shape are quite straight. It seems like it's not really wrong. Sister, give it a try, give it a taste. I've washed all the fruits, Bai Feng continued. Okay. Truth nodded and lightly bit the fruit in her hand. The next second, she was amazed by the unique flavor of the fruit. This. Is this really the fruit you planted? When Bai Feng saw the expression on Truth's face, he knew that the business had become half done. He quickly nodded and said, Of course, can you still deceive sister? Truth hurriedly said, Didn't you say you brought the test results? Show me now. Okay. Bai Feng quickly took out the prepared test results from his pocket and handed them to Truth. Truth took a look and saw several large characters on the top of the paper, which were clearly labeled as C. Grade. She nodded with satisfaction and thought to herself, the flavor is unique, and the energy rating is not low. That's enough. I didn't expect my little brother to really have some skills, and he looks pretty. Truth continued to scroll down while thinking, and after flipping through the last few pages, her eyes couldn't help but widen. B, B level. Truth thought she was dizzy, instinctively rubbed her eyes, and then looked over carefully. That's right, it's still written at level B. Did you make a mistake? How could it be B dot level? Truth pointed to the test results and said to Bai Feng, unable to believe that she had encountered a B.level tree fruit outside. Jin Yen, the younger brother of Truth, and his friend Ishuan also leaned their heads together and immediately widened their eyes in disbelief. B.level, this is not a joke, is it? Dong Yu. Ishuan looked at his friend Dong Yu with an expression of what was going on. Dong Yu Chao nodded with a mysterious nod, indicating that what his friend saw was true, while also smiling bitterly in his heart, because he had the same reaction when he first saw the test results. 
After receiving a positive response from his friend, he cracked open with a Schwanjin expression. Is there anything more mystical than the B.rated tree fruit that was nurtured by a child? At present, the Pokemon tree fruits available in the market are generally rated as D, and even the energy blocks and Pokemon Pok A Fry in the Pokemon food store are made from tree fruits of this level. Further C. Grade fruits need to be purchased at special specialty stores, which are no longer available in ordinary small shops. Even if they are available, they will only be supplied in small quantities to loyal or high quality customers. When the fruit reaches level B, it will be difficult for you to see it on the market. This is a monopolistic resource, and if you really want to buy it, you need to find special channels. A. Grade tree fruits belong to special resources, and even more advanced S. Grade tree fruits are not qualified for ordinary people to access. Sister, the test results are genuine, and there is no need for me to deceive you in this regard. Also, these two baskets of fruits will be used as a gift for today's meeting, and I will give them to sister. Please go back and take a look first, and contact me when it is confirmed. I am waiting for sister. Bai Feng's mouth was sweet, and he smiled as he stuffed the basket into Truth's hand. Truth thought to herself. Yes, this kind of thing cannot deceive people, because detectors are not difficult to obtain and can be easily detected with just one measurement. Child, are you very talented? Sister likes you like this. Do you want to go home with her? Sister's family is very wealthy. Truth pinched by Feng's slightly baby fat little face and said seductively. A young man who can cultivate B.grade fruit has an unlimited future and can bring it home without losing money. Sister, stop joking, I'm still young. By phone blushed and said shyly. Truth said half jokingly, it's okay, sister can wait. Do you think sister is old? She looked at By phone with a sorrowful expression. On the side, Dong Yu, Jin Yen, and Ishuan have already started rolling their eyes. Winter Feather Sigma, oh oh winky face. Jin Yen de, Yi Xian Underscore, Bai Feng looked puzzled and said, Sister, my mother doesn't allow me to have early love. Upon hearing this, Truth stopped teasing Bai Feng and said, I'll accept your gift and give you an answer tomorrow. Then she took a big step away with her basket in hand. All right, goodbye sister. By phone warmly waved at Truth. After Truth left, he patted Dong Yu's shoulder with Xian and said, Brother, you really gave me a surprise. I didn't expect Bai Feng's younger brother to be so secretive. I said I only found out today, do you believe me? Bai Feng has always been very talented in this field, so Master Fuad likes him very much and has guided him on a lot of planting knowledge, he explained casually Bai Feng is still young and lacks the ability to protect himself, so Dong Yu thinks it's better not to let his outstanding talent be exposed in front of others, just pull the tiger skin and flag. Besides, he didn't lie either. Phi did indeed guide the white maple planting technique, but he didn't personally pass it on like the teacher did. Is it the owner of Fuade Hall? Is it the owner of Bai Dao Hall? Upon hearing these words, Ishuan and Jinyan suddenly realized, no wonder. Both of them automatically attributed the B.grade fruit cultivated by the white maple to Phi. After parting ways with the two, on the way home, Dong Yu said to Bai Feng, you can pack some fruits and send them to the Bai Taoist Hall to Fuyi. Although these may not be much to him, at least they are your intention. Although there was no need for Dong Yu to say that Bai Feng would do the same, Bai Feng was still deeply moved. Coupled with Dong Yu's explanation just now, he sincerely said to Dong Yu, Thank you, Dong Yu brother. Dong Yu didn't speak, just lightly patted Bai Feng's shoulder. The next day, the truth arrived as promised, and she was overjoyed. At a glance, she knew she was very satisfied with yesterday's fruit. Brother Bai Feng, how many B.grade fruits do you have? Sister has all of them, Truth said boldly as soon as she met. Bai Feng said with a puzzled expression, but now only one batch of fruits has matured, and the rest will have to wait a little longer. Well, that's it. 
I was so idealistic and wanted to say, then give me the mature one first, and you can contact me when the rest is mature. Okay, sister is really domineering. By phone continued to promote while flattering, sister, don't you want C. Grade fruits? My C. Grade fruits are also very good. Let's have some C. Grade fruit, too. B. Grade fruits are rare and cannot be used casually. We still need to buy some C. Grade fruits. With the taste of those fruits, we won't lose out on anything. If my sister thinks it's good, she should promote it more in front of her classmates. As a student of Pokemon, if Truth could bring in a few classmates for him, then this one spread ten, ten spread hundred, and the market would open up. Truth patted by phone with satisfaction and said, Don't worry, sister will definitely help you with this little favor. After Truth placed the order, the two parted ways. As soon as by phone returned home, he shouted to Bai Yi, Mom, let's work. Shanai. Shanai, you're back, how's it going? Is it done? Bai Yi asked eagerly. Bai Fong made an okay gesture and said with a natural expression, If I come forward, of course it will be a quick success. Sha. Shanai. Shanai, so. Are we going to have money? Bai Yi excitedly said. Yeah, we're going to have money. Bai Fong had almost forgotten what it felt like to be rich, and now he was finally about to welcome his first bucket of gold, feeling both happy and complex in his heart. The mother and son hugged each other, bouncing and jumping. Bai Fong is happy that the days are finally getting better, while Bai Yi is happy that Bai Feng's efforts have not been in vain. To be honest, Bai Yi never felt the hardships of living on the island in the past, nor could she imagine the happiness of having money in the future. She believed that as long as she was with Bai Fong, everything else was not important. White Maple is happy, it is also happy. After being happy, Bai Fong said to Bai Yi, All right, let's quickly go pick the fruits and send them to the guests. So the mother and son began to get busy, with the superpower of Bai Yi, picking fruits became a very simple task. Bai Yi is responsible for picking, while Bai Fong is responsible for grading the fruits with a detector, and then storing the B and C grade separately. After the mother and son were busy for a while, Dean Mary saw the situation here and came to help with Xiao Yu and Ihui. Everyone, please bring me a basket to pick the fruits, and I will quickly finish picking and packing them neatly. After the picking was over, Bai Fong took advantage of the freshness and immediately called a carriage to deliver it to Truth. After confirming that the fruit was fine, Truth immediately paid the money. This batch of fruits weighs 100 pounds in B. grade and 300 pounds in C. grade. The rest of the white maple has already been wiped out by Truth. Truth praised by Fong for doing business and promised to promote it for him. The average price of C. grade fruits on the market is 150 yuan per kilogram, while B. grade fruits usually cost 300 yuan per kilogram. Therefore, this batch of white maple fruits was sold for a total of 75,000 yuan. Ten year old by Fong is now able to open his own savings account so Truth directly transfers the money to his account. Seeing a string of numbers on his account, Bai Feng's heart was trembling. Finally rich. After returning home, Bai Feng quietly went to meet Dean Mary. Seeing Bai Feng, Dean Mary happily asked, How did it go? Did the delivery go smoothly? Bai Feng nodded and said, Dean Mary, I have something I want to discuss with you. Dean Mary asked in confusion, what do you say? So by phone said he wanted to allocate one-tenth of the profits from selling fruits to a few children. Dean Mary quickly refused after hearing this and said, how can we do that? You worked hard to grow that fruit, and we all saw the energy it took. How could anyone ask for your money? By phone explained, you and the children have helped me a lot, weeding, watering, and taking care of me. You all put in a lot of effort. We're a family, what's the point of helping out with this? Dean Mary still refused. As a family member, what's wrong with me wanting to save some money for my younger brothers and sisters? 
Bai Feng argued, besides, the land I use to grow fruits is in the courtyard. It's not unreasonable for me to pay some rent now, is it? Dean Mary was left speechless by Bai Feng. Bai Feng continued, Dean Mary, I have saved this money for the children, and you have no right to decide for them. Also, Shaolima, you don't want her to be silent for a lifetime, do you? As long as she has the money, she can go see a doctor. Maybe one day she will be cured. Dean Mary was powerless to refuse, and in the end, she could only agree with tears in her eyes. She hugged by foam and buried her head in his neck. You are a good child. Bai Feng didn't know the expression on Dean Mary's face at the moment, but he vaguely felt waves of dampness coming from his neck. After a long time, Bai Feng whispered, Don't tell the children about this money yet. You can take it out when they need it in the future. I know, Dean Mary said softly. Afterwards, Bai Feng transferred 7,500 yuan to Dean Mary. The first batch of fruits has only been sold this season, and the rest will mature gradually. When the money is sold, he will allocate 10% of it to the children. With money, Bai Feng decided to treat himself well, so the next day he took Bai Yi, Ong Tai, Kai Kaizi, Yi Hui, Xiao Yu, and Li Mo to the western district, intending to take them to play and have a good meal. There's no need to go to school on this day, and if they come back late, there won't be any problem. He originally invited Dong Yu, but Dong Yu said he had an appointment with his classmates, so everyone had to leave him to play on their own. Before departure, Bai Feng found two bamboo baskets and picked some fruits to put in and bring with him, intending to give them to Miss Jun Sha and Captain Sanders, who happened to live in the West End. I just don't know if Captain Sanders has gone out to sea. Captain Sanders and his team saved Bai Feng and Bai Yi, and Miss Jun Sha found a place for them to stay. Bai Feng always remembered their kindness. Although a basket of fruits may not be valuable, it is still his intention. After everything was ready, Bai Feng and Bai Yi set off with a group of little radish heads. The children came out to play in this form for the first time, so they were very excited and filled with anticipation all the way. After arriving in the western district, Bai Feng plans to first deliver the tree fruits to Miss Jun Sha and Mr. Sanders, and then go play, which will make it easier. Since going to the Qingya Orphanage, Bai Feng has returned to the West District for the first time. Looking at the flowing streets and rows of high dot rise buildings, he surprisingly felt a bit uncomfortable. After arriving at the police station, Bai Feng asked the children to wait in the hall, while he himself found a police officer to inquire about Miss Juncha's whereabouts. Are you looking for Miss Junsha? She went to the police. Is there anything you need? If you don't mind, I can convey it. The person talking to Bai Feng was a beautiful police flower, but not Miss Junsha. That's it. Bai Feng thought for a moment and handed the basket in his hand to the police sister. Sister, if you give this to Miss Junsha, just say it was sent by Bai Feng from the Qingya Orphanage. Don't worry. I will convey it for you. The police sister saw that it was just a basket of fruits, not a violation, so she took it down. Leaving the police station, Bai Feng took his children to the research institute where Captain Sanders worked. Captain Sanders is an archaeologist who often goes out to sea to explore relics, so he is not in the research institute. End of this chapter.